You are listening to Space Boy Universe on the SBU Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lotta. Welcome to Space Greetings, everyone. Please stand by after this uh, technical difficulty to be resolved, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> this is what we're deal with, dealing with. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's my theme song. Yes. <laughs> it's, I guess it's uh, fitting. Space for music, space for music. Salutations, I'm Space Boy. And I'm Solana. And this is Space Boy Universe. It is not the Reverend John Polk show, but he is our guest tonight. It is August 12th, 2017, and we have in store guest Reverend John Polk, and we'll talk to him in a little bit. As always, follow the universe on Twitter, that's at the SB Universe. Follow the host that bring you the show at Solana and at Space Boy Music. And of course, follow the network that brings you all this fabulous content. That's at the SBU Network. Remember to hashtag your tweets tonight with hashtag SBUniverse and hashtag Space Cadets because we're watching you on the screen behind us. Uh, Want to hang out with the Space Cadets? Go to SpaceBoyUniverse.com. Click on the dancing chat bubble and that will get you in with all the cool kids. In addition to Twitter, you can find us out on the universe on Facebook, Tumblr, SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, and many more places. Speaking of YouTube, you can find more than the SBU archive of shows. In fact... There is video content from Space Boy Music, which I know has been a long time for a show on that one. SBU interviews, video interviews, 2-Bit Gamers, and so much more. So go there, subscribe, and you get a lot more content there. Can't catch a show live? No problemo. There's SBU on the go via Spreaker, SoundCloud, and iTunes because we love to broadcast. Don't we, Solana? Yes. <laughs> and especially when we're trying to remember to broadcast our own, own show and not Space Boy Music. And uh, we kind of gave you some teaser music there uh, about Reverend John Polk, which is in the, in the studio. You want to say hello? Hello, everybody. Space Cadets, how you doing? <laughs> we're glad Our to second see. person to in, be in live the in the studio. Yes. And, uh, in fact, if you go to the Twitter reverse um, you'll see that uh, there's some pictures there with Reverend John Polk and myself in front of Todd, the Tad, man- Tad the mannequin, Tad, as you call it. <laughs> and he's metrosexual. Yeah, whatever. So, um, Sherlock, how are you this evening? <laughs> Giggly. Yeah, okay. Well, I, it's, uh, you were saying a headache earlier, but... Uh, yeah, uh, I'll, that's still coming. There must be a change. Must be coming. Mm-hmm. A change is coming. Sounds like uh, Kurt Russell in the movie Tombstone. Didn't see that. Anyway, uh, some of our audience will know that one. 
So um, let's jump right into the ne- uh, meat and potatoes tonight, Sir Lana. And if you want to chime in, Reverend John, go ahead. I mean, you're a part of the universe, so. All right, let's do it, brother. Okay. Um, how about we do this? Let's shift it up. Normally during this time, we do banter. I know that Reverend John Polk has had a long drive. So why don't we kick it in into overdrive and get him in now so that if he does start to fade a little bit later, that uh, uh, we can let him go and get some mm-hmm. rest. So, um Reverend John Polk, uh, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> I can remember a number of months ago I was talking about doing exactly what we're doing right now. Uh, that went back to May of this year, right before I went to contact in the desert with Eric and saw about 20 UFOs. Mm-hmm. You know, the whole ball was in motion. And uh, first I had to sell my house, and that was a huge ordeal. I'm a horrible pack rat. And my mom's a pack rat and gives me down, gives me all her hand-me-down pack rat stuff. And I, not was I moving my furniture all the way from Florida to Arizona, I had to get rid of all my furniture. And that was harder than just packing up my furniture and moving it from point A to point B. So having to get rid of everything except for what I could fit in my truck, my whole life is in my truck right now. And I'm basically homeless. Well, well at least you've got a vehicle on wheels, right? <laughs> yeah. So for right now, I'm... I'm living with Space Boy and Serlana, and they have a, they have a foundation for um, uh, internet hosts that are on a sabbatical where they will actually take them in and feed them and give them a mattress in the back of the van so they can sleep. And you know they're great people; they're humanitarians. And it's what the SBU network does for all our our hosts. You or, could put them in the van so they could be down by the river to sleep in a van exactly. down by the river. Yeah, and your philanthropy is your currency. So well, I'm just I'm just glad to be here. Yes, we're glad to see you. And uh, uh, you know we I don't know in my mindset I thought it was like another month we were looking at, but I mean things just kind of came together for you. They did. They did at the very last minute. Everything came together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I told you on the closing day, the day before the closing day, I was told by the title company that there was a lien against my house. And so, long story, but we sorted that out on the day of the closing, like an hour before we closed. And mm-hmm. we actually closed on time after a lien should have been cleaned up a long time ago. And it just freaked me out, out of my mind, because I had been sleeping on the floor for three days on an on a uncomfortable inflatable mattress. So when, I guess uh, kind of if, if you want to tell our audience a little bit about uh, how quickly all this went down, I mean, you were like talking to me about, okay, I got to get the roof fixed and, and then I got to sell the house. And, and, and I guess it just seemed like it, seemed like it was going to take forever. I had this impression in my mind. But – and indeed, it it did not. It just like it was like uncorking the bottom of a sink and draining it, and and everything just went. I know it. It went much more expeditiously than it was turning out to be, and uh, I ended up finding a cat. Uh, my one of my best friends was fixing up my house as he was a contractor and real estate agent, and I get this thing in the mail. We buy houses cash as is. And I started thinking about that and did the math and started talking to these cash buyers who are all dirtbags. They all lie about everything. Mm-hmm. They all blame each other for being liars. They all badmouth each other. But the one guy I ended up going with was the highest bidder and didn't badmouth anybody. Hmm. So I guess was that the, like, okay, this is the guy I want to go with? Or? Yeah, and I scared him out of his mind. I, I told him I would have him buried under the prison if he messed with me and my money <laughs> in any way whatsoever. In any way whatsoever. And I got kind of mean and nasty with him, and the guy didn't really know how to read me. And he didn't even inspect my house. <laughs> really? <laughs> Which is unheard of. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I can't imagine uh, doing a house without an inspection. And uh, You know, he tried to a couple times, and it didn't work out. I mean, I had to be home for mm-hmm. them to get inside. Um, I, I wasn't going to leave anybody a key because my stuff was still in there right. at that point. So anyway, but everything worked out. And in the end, I told the guy I'm going to give him a, a great reference. Good, He good. treated me fairly. Um, I, You know, I... I profited off the sale of my home, and now I don't have a home, and I'm on this pilgrimage out west to supernatural Sedona, Arizona, where I'm going to forge a new life, and I'm looking forward to it, but it's not the destination, although it is, but it's it's the journey, right? It's the journey. It's the journey now, because I'm only in Houston. Star Trek Voyager. I got another, you know, 
thousand fifteen hundred miles to go <laughs> but still you you've got some pit stops along the way uh i imagine that uh this is kind of an opportunity for you to kind of see things that uh you know you've been in florida for some time and now that you you know you're out of florida so to speak out of the box you know why not stop here stop there you know uh, we're touched that you consider stopping here and spend a little time with us and uh even if it wasn't going to be for the show just you know we opened our house you know because you know i knew that you had a, a journey to, ahead of you well and i invited myself yeah. to come over i, I basically <laughs> imposed on you and said I'm, I'm staying at your house i'm like i'll bring my inflatable mattress if i have to and that's hey I, it, it you know worked out. i did not have a problem because you know i've often you know the moment I've told you this story before, and we've had conversations that um, w when the first time that I got to talk to you, and I guess it was when we interviewed you, I knew that there was something more in, in our both of our combined future that, uh, you know, that we would come together on. Um, l I did not realize that it would be hosting a show for you. Um, it, not, not, well, it's fill-in host, but what I'm saying, producing Please. a show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sir Lana. And um, but I, I'd always said that uh, you know that there's a connection there, and and I'm glad that we made that connection. And uh, I've enjoyed talking with you, and it's 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 been nice. And and I've, uh, Sir Lana will tell you, I don't just you know, when I'm committed to something, I'm committed. But if uh, and people in general, it's hard for me to make good connections. And it might be just the time that we live in and everything, but. Um, you and I have made a connection in the sense that uh, uh, I feel good when I'm around you, and it's nice to talk to you, and you're very positive. Uh -oh. Sorry. See, this is what I had to deal with. <laughs> well, I don't want to. I don't want to derail the conversation, but my sister said, "Tell Reverend Polk not to use fix a flat to repair punctures in his air mattress." <laughs> that, that's a that's a family story. No, I'm sure that's very good advice, but what, um, yeah. What's you, the what's the backstory on that? Yeah, tell the story. Well, we had an air mattress, and uh, my dad, it had some little small punctures in it, and he didn't have a well, those kits, so he used fix a flat, but he was using an electric air pump, and it sparked <laughs> oh, no. and ignited the fix a flat. Oh God! And the and the mattress was on top of their bed because this is before my mom got diagnosed with bone cancer she didn't know why she was in so much pain so they thought maybe it's a bed so he tried that and it just went into this round glowing ball until it sucked all the oxygen out and went <clears throat> and they said they, and i was away i was spending the night with somebody and they said they didn't see the cat for two days after that because <laughs> the cat was in the room so so, yeah, yeah, just a little handy tip about, for you. Talking about burning the beds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that wasn't the beds only. That, that, that wasn't the last mattress story, but I won't get into that. The, <laughs> okay. the, the other one was actually more hysterical. I was there for that one. so Very fascinating, funny stuff. But it, it, long story short, John, is that I'm glad that we've become friends. And, and my door has, is always open. And uh, so if you come back this way, um, on a visit, you know, you, you can always stay here, and uh, that's what I wanted to say. And uh, by the way, um, Space Boy and Solana have a pretty fly studio. <laughs> and I was saying, at some point, we got to get some pictures and, and geek out on social media. Why, why not? I don't think that uh, she was prepared that it was going to turn out this way. No. Um, but I had this vision, and it was like, okay, I didn't want to move back. This used to be the Space Boy Music Labs uh, where I'd make all my mu my music was in here. And and then, of course, then we created the studio with the music because I had all the equipment in here. And then eventually where you're staying now, the Red Room, is where we moved the studios in there. The Red Room. Yeah, and so finally I, I wanted to move into this room back. It had the space that we needed. We could get a bigger desk and all the equipment. And But I wanted to do this. It was the plain vanilla walls. And I wanted to put a space theme in here to just, you know, <laughs> you take it up a mug. It, you know, even, it just even feels ceiling, different, yeah, 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 in here. So, and that was my idea behind you with uh, the windows. The, the, yeah, I the, take credit for that. So, but yeah, it's it was fun. And, I mean, I just knew that uh, I knew what I saw in, in my mind. And I wanted to translate it. And uh, 
uh, we've been very happy the way it was it fun doing that. Oh, with yeah, the paint. the paint to make the stars and Just throwing a paint. Well, we got to take some pictures of it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, but anyway, that's that's the studio, and uh, you know, it, it's and it plus another reason is you know how much Solana loves people is that uh, we moved the studio up here so that whenever we had uh, had a host or a guest come in, um, you know, it could just come right here. And then you sit there, and then we would have this refrigerator stocked with the refreshments. And then when the show is over, okay, see you later. There's the door. Go. Oh, and they don't get to see the rest <laughs> of the house. <laughs> so, but, yeah, that's the the whole reason. Uh, well, not the whole reason why we moved back here, but it was just a multitude of reasons. We just wanted something that looked a little bit more professional and um, and fun and, and kind of uh, – uh, highlights the universe so but anyway that's my my thing and i'm sticking to it wow well, stick all right so john um you know is there any stories you want to tell that you i mean you were on your way here you had a fa fantastic journey of 11 hours to get here and on your way uh, through Solana's home state um you know here i'm telling you hey it's sunny here in houston it's you know it's burning up here you know uh, skies are out there and and then but and i was thinking you know all this rain had gone away even through louisiana but that was not the case not at all not at all and this morning you know i got up at seven i didn't end up leaving until 10 till 9 that was not the plan i wanted to leave a lot earlier but mom mm -hmm. deliberately prolonged the process <laughs> oh well, i gotta cook your breakfast and oh wait i gotta make you a bunch of food and you know, I can't tell her no. So um, anyway, I left when I left. And uh, the drive was actually pretty easy. Uh, not a whole lot of traffic until I got to Louisiana. And then um, it started to, where there was nothing on the radar, it started to convect and blow up mm -hmm. right as I was crossing through there. <laughs> and what, what really stunk about it is that I was supposed to go hang out with Chad and Alta. Right. You, you know, and the, their book Orbducted, The Abduction in the French Quarter, where her, her husband, Chad and Alta, and then her boss, all three get abducted. And if you haven't heard the story, they're walking down basically Bourbon Street. They go to five bars. There's only one person in each bar. And that's, wow. un, that's unheard of. It's impossible. Yeah, I was like, and yeah. And it, it freaked out Alta. They go sit down, like, on the side of the street somewhere. Next thing you know, three days later, they find just Chad and Alta in their home, and they had no idea where their boss was, and they, I believe they found her the next day. Wow. And anyway, I was going to go visit them, and what I wanted to do, I wanted to go where they actually went. I wanted to go to those bars. Mm hmm So, because I, I can look into extra-dimensional realms. So I wanted to be able to go in there and basically ghost hunt and try and figure out what timeline dimension that they were on. Because they clear, you cannot walk down in the French Quarter and go to five bars and nobody's in any of them right. except one person. So what was that one person? Probably an extra dimensional. I was going to say, is this New Orleans in a parallel timeline or uh, yeah. you know, universe? They, or? they traversed into some other timeline dimension somehow well, you can do that in new orleans usually just with alcohol and the hurricane <laughs> you know drink. And, a, and a few beads yeah yeah, yeah so. but anyway i was going to go visit her and uh and her husband and i was hopefully going to be able to go on the tour of where exactly they went and she's like don't come just don't come there's flooding they're starting to block streets you know it's dangerous you know and i so i'm like okay i was either going to stop because the rain was so bad and get a hotel room or go through it. So I'm looking at the radar, and it hit not it hit New Orleans, but uh, I thought I was north of it the whole time. And at the last minute, it popped up. So I went through a horrible cell for probably 45 minutes. We we're doing 30 some hmm. miles an hour. It did get up to 50, but it was totally dangerous. And we we're on the system of bridges in Shreveport, which Serlana can remember very well as she grew up there. Um, but 45 minutes later, you know. I was just trying to be as safe as I could be. And one thing, when you start praying in situations like that, you pray for everybody, you know, not you just, the Jimmy not Davis just Bridge? yourself, that we all can get through this safely. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm the only one protected, that doesn't do any good. Let's right. protect all of us because somebody can run into your own car. You know, uh, we got through it safely. Thank God. And uh, it was all sun the whole way before then and after then also. Than hmm. just unrelenting heat once you get here. Oh yeah, yeah. And so, anyway, 
got here. It said 11 hours online. Took about 11 hours and 15 minutes. So pr right. pretty accurate. And, uh, and despite all that rain. Yeah, and uh, I remember leaving Florida, like right around Pensacola, I saw like four or five cops in unmarked cars. You know, like like driving a you know a Chevy Citation or something, mm -hmm. you know, or a minivan, pulling people over. I'm like, oh god, well, <laughs> slow were, were down. They, were they uh, like uh, on the route where you were going to, or was it the route the uh, opposite coming back, or both? Oh wow, and what what state? The Florida. In Florida. In Florida. Oh, that's right. You said Pensacola. Yeah. So anyway, but I made it safely, and that's the most important thing. Thank God. So. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring up Pensacola, and um, I'm reminded uh, of stories of of um, UFO activity. And mm -hmm. could you do you have any stories um, behind that? Or uh, I do. Um, is there any that you can tell our audience tonight? I have. I never saw anything there, but I never really frequented that area. I've been there a couple times, a long time ago. Um, that was really before I got into UFO hunting, hunting them, mm -hmm. um, seen them before, but never really hunted them. I was in probably my mid twenties. Um, but in Gulf Breeze in the nineties, uh, near a military base, imagine that, right. um, somebody captured footage of this silver disc that was reflecting light as if it was metallic, um, just suspended there. Multiple people got photographs of it, multiple witnesses viewed it in the sky um and then some of the photos went viral you know a, a long time ago but if you dig online if you go to gulf breeze ufo mm -hmm. sightings you can find them they're all over the internet yeah there was a big flap um mm -hmm. a, a while back i remember and um, um fascinating by it because you know the gulf breeze thing reminds me of uh point doom out in um, yeah. in Malibu, we got to see that uh, because you know not too far. You've got a military base, and mm -hmm. it's that area of where uh, they say that there's this underground uh, underground underwater underwater. There is yeah, and uh, yeah, off Catalina uh, Island exactly, and, and actually multiple places. And then it's funny because Brad Olson, who's been on Quantum Hologram Matrix, still on every Wednesday eight to ten <laughs> Eastern, and I will be back on my own show uh, here in the next few weeks once I figure all that out. But uh, yeah, cause he was because those current hosts are really terrible. Uh, hey, <laughs> they're, they're getting better, though. They're getting good, good, good. But anyway, Brad Olson, I heard him talking on somebody else's show about how there was these minor earthquakes that seemed like they were from some kind of technology as opposed to actual seismic activity mm -hmm. going on in the Pacific Basin. Right. You know, right by those bases. Mm. By those bases. Right. So I found that interesting. Indeed. And, uh, mm -hmm. you, know, this, that, you know, those are more recently, uh, I guess, been brought up. And um, I think uh, I had seen something that A&E was going to do some kind of story on, on that. And uh, so it'd be something to look forward to, to, you know, get an update on that and the underground basis. Of course, um, there's been, uh, I guess, uh, submarines. There's, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, diagrams for submarines to come underneath. Um, the ground and then to, to surface. I've heard like surface uh, majorly inland uh, to come up, and I don't know what you know about that, but. Yeah, our covert black ops military has subs that have actually, they have a base down there too. Mm -hmm. It's a joint base. It's, okay. not, it's not just theirs. Okay. And we are not in charge. <laughs> well, <laughs> but also since you know, since there's that um, crustal plate, right? All the seismic activity it releases geothermal energy, which can be harnessed and used for propulsion hmm. and power. So that's another reason that they do it on a fault line. That's often why you see you know fault lines don't necessarily have to be just on the land; they're under the ocean also. Mm -hmm. Right. And the release of geothermal energy is a very valuable source of free energy to ET who knows how to easily harness sure, sure. that energy coming out of the earth. Hmm. Um, so I, what, yeah. did, did you have something over there or anything? I'll just read people talking about what kind of drinks they're drinking. Oh, <laughs> Apparently Eric's got a watermelon Patron margarita. I'm like, Oh, it sounds so good. <laughs> and I can't even, I can't even get online. You know, it, it, try refreshing. Just, uh, this is tech, the IT tech, guru is going to help Tech Talk Reverend while I'm, uh, I'm sitting next to him, ladies and gentlemen. I, <laughs> Do you know how many and, times we go over this over, and, over uh, Skype and on the phone? <laughs> it's because he's got a Mac. 
Oh, um, yeah, well. <laughs> 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 Matt got slapped right in yeah, the mug. Well, you know, I'm a Windows guy. I work on Windows for a reason. Um, but, uh, you know, um, but you, you, I think you almost caused us to start late today because, you know, you're, you have this. <laughs> so you, that's on me. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know, you have this energy that. Uh, I do, man. I, you know I do. I mean, like we briefly talked to Eric uh, before, uh, a couple hours ago, and all of a sudden he started breaking up and. Uh, we oh, couldn't when hear we started it. talking about Stan Romanek's yeah, father. Exactly. That, and that is the, when exactly it started to break exactly. up. Exactly. And I always catalog that stuff. I have a journal. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> when does the signal so, drop out? And what were we talking about? And what the time signature was? Mm-hmm. Time, date, what were we talking about? And then the, the drop out you of know, sound. I, I didn't know that about you as far as taking notes of when you, you oh, know, yeah. touch on I'm gonna, something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in my next book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I know that the, the, the topic of Stan Romanek has been one that we started here on the universe. And, and it was easy to port it over to the quantum hologram matrix and Eric has been great to contribute a lot of information on that and um, he's going to uh, call in later at some yeah, point at too some point. which I'm very curious to hear what he has to say you know with Eric it's it's always interesting to hear from him mm-hmm. so uh, I'm sure he'll dive into some good stuff so why don't we take our bottom of the hour break we're a little bit early but I wanted to um, get John into the pool and swim around and uh, uh, we're gonna have some more with him so don't go anywhere and in the course of in honor of John being here here's a song I wrote for him I awaken I awaken I awaken I awaken my out-of-body experience my out-of-body experience my out of body experience my out of body experience piercing a hole into empty space i split the heavens to create my own orifice in the universe i reach inside to pull out handfuls of cosmic secrets that no one's supposed to know no one's supposed to know but then as the stars twinkle along with the ambition in my eyes I smile to enlighten the face of space that highlights lost perception. Ultimately, I fathom to depths within, absorbing non-physical reality. My out-of-body experience. My out-of-body experience. My out-of-body experience my out of body experience with every inhale stellar dust settles at the mouth of the orifice to shape my prior perceptions but now in light of my new beginning i lose myself in the bottomless void providing me crystal clear vision to see the source of starry lights and cosmic corridors i spoil myself with quenching perceptions that moisten my eyes of stone. But then, as I look away from immortal glamour, I see over my shrugging shoulders a speck of reality's light. In bitter conceit, I lift my nose and turn my back at what's no longer me. My out of body experience, my out of body experience. My out of body experience. My out of body experience. I awaken to be filled with a breath of reality and memories from high in the skies. You are listening to Space Boy Universe on the SBU Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lana.
You know, I, I would dance to it. So basically, I'm being beaten up over here by John. He's basically he, hitting him because he's so overjoyed. Uh, I guess this is the first time he's really soaked in this song that I've written for him, and uh, it's his words. Uh, I mean, you you want to tell the audience a little bit your about lyrics. your lyrics, or well, actually, your prose. Um, <laughs> I wrote I wrote that when I was on acid when I was 19 years old when I was going to Florida State. And oh, here's a story behind it. Um, it's, you know, I, I, what I would do, I would go to Daytona and go to the million dollar condo, which I'm going to post on Twitter before too long, um, where I was first abducted. Okay. Um, I would go there on the weekends and then drive back to Florida State, like on Sunday night, so that I could be in school Monday morning. And then, um, anyway, so I, I, I party all weekend, and then I have to do an impromptu speech for speech class at Florida State. And it could be anything you wanted it to be. Anything you wanted it to be. So I'm like, I'm going to write some poetry. And it just came out as prose. And anyway, I did that while I was under the influence, and it turned out pretty darn good, man. And, and drugs are bad. I'm not endorsing drugs in any way whatsoever. <laughs> I'm an ordained minister now. I, I, I was 19 at the time. But that is the true story. With, well, I kid, but uh, all that aside, uh, you know, when I heard you sent that to me, and it was like, uh, here, I'm going to send you something, you know, and I, I don't think you really expected me to do all what that. I, all that. And, uh, and it was like, when I was hearing it, I was like, man, I'm really hearing something really cool here, and I'm digging what you had written prose wise. And so I just started taking it and I chopped it down into little segments and, you know, got it synced up the best I could. And uh, there you go. The quantum hologram matrix jam, uh, my out of my out of body experience. And so it was fun to make. So, you know, just little things like that, because, uh, you know, it was a, I did a commercial for you, too, for your book. And um, oh, I love that one. And, too. And I like the music that I put behind yes. it because uh, it, it's definitely different. And uh, so, you know, in a way, there's been things that you have been amused for me to create some interesting music to go with, you know, even like the theme music for the Quantum Hologram Matrix. Um, you came to me and you said, uh, I guess you wanted something like Pink Floyd. I did. And, 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 I did. and something in that style. And so I just, you know, I just, all I could think of... Uh, uh, you know, I was listening to Comfortably Numb and some, a few other things. And and, 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 and once again, it was like uh, I grabbed my guitar. It seems like whenever I gravitate back to my guitar, um, you know. It's I, not often. And, and it, I really have created some really cool stuff. That was on guitar. Yeah, it was on guitar. It sounds uh, like keyboard. And, but, I mean, well, it's the, 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 yeah, the main guitar part is is it has a few effects put through it but it is me playing um which he gets aggravated because <laughs> i'm i like to sometimes just slap something t together real quick and then i have these pre-programmed guitar rhythm things that you know i could just play e minor and then it'll play the e minor chord in a certain rhythm style it's really a cool program that i use and propeller heads reason um and so, but I picked up my guitar, you know, played a few things, brought it in, and just like, uh, you know, ed with the editing software, put it all together, and I, I gave you a theme song, and it, I love it. I, mean, I love I, love I mean, I hate bragging song. about my own stuff, no, but... You, you should, and guess what? Space Boy is for hire, okay? <laughs> you can spin ideas at him just over the phone or, you know, email, whatever, and he can get a flavor for what you want and he can kind of like dig into your psyche and kind of empathically <laughs> feel you out based on your conversation. So well, I, mean, I, I because he did it John. to me. He did it to me perfectly. I rebranded John the QH Matrix. You did, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. With the wolf and the oh yeah, uh, that's all Sir Lana. When you go like, to the I just want to know I do things too. Yes, you do things. <laughs> in other words, look at me. Look at me. Uh, I'm over here behind the monitors. She doesn't want to be seen. You but know, then I like all the branding for my show. <laughs> I like all the music. I like all the branding. Uh, I, I love my production team. Or my executive producers are very professional, do a great job. The only issue we have is internet dropout yeah. problems. But besides that, we run a tight ship. We run a tight show. We are good researchers. 
It's important to us. Um, the show's growing. Um, you know, David Adair, that show had over 5,000 hits. Oh, yeah. That was, that was awesome. You know, Eric had to, did a show with the, uh, the recap of the MUFON Symposium in Las Vegas, had o- o- over 200 hits, and I wasn't even on my own show. Right. You know, so, yay. You're only as strong as your, your weakest, weakest link. link, and you're only as strong as your team. And if you have a strong team, then you're just even more powerful. Right. Collectively, because it is a collective unit effort. It takes all of us to make it work, and it's getting better. Mm-hmm. And when I finally get to Sedona, which is my ultimate destination, Sedona, Arizona, I have a place to stay out there. I'm going to plant roots out there. Uh, I'm going to immediately get into UFO hunting and ghost hunting. First two things I want to do. I'm also a Reiki master instructor. I'm going to work with Javi at the Awareness Life Center where they actually had um, they had a healing kind of symposium today with only select healers Hmm. that were presenting and doing healing sessions and i'm not exactly sure what all entailed but it was something like that uh you kind of mentioned uh today about how um uh you'll have more freedom than you did before to be able to do the uh do that and um so it it poses an exciting future now uh so are you going to just totally gravitate away from what you used to do here in florida with the the venues uh, and just are you setting a path to re um i guess what is it i'm looking for the words re package yourself reinvent myself or rein- yes. Yeah. but yes all of the above but uh what did i do i brought my dj sound system i am a i am a dj karaoke guy i do mm-hmm. sing i sing for a living um i brought all that with me you know, you saw I brought mm-hmm, yeah. three computers and a bag full of technical equipment that I don't want to leave in Two my car. And, <laughs> and I brought my keyboard also and all my electronics. Mm-hmm. I had to bring all of that. See, so, y'all could have a jam session if we just had a space and a time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe one day, yeah. He'll only be one state away this time. Yeah, um, you know, we wanted to go. We could meet him in uh, Roswell. New Mexico. Yeah. We mentioned that we would love to do that. We drive drive to Roswell, New Mexico. Yeah. We could just get out of the state of Texas. It <laughs> takes ten, eight to ten hours just to get, get out, out of Texas, Texas from here. From here, really? just yeah. to get out of this Texas is but, big. But I feel bad after hearing you know uh, John talk about how he's driven from well with him and his brother from Florida all the way to L.A. and um, so but they've had stops along the way. But yeah. Um, you know, when we planned our trip, it was like, uh, you know, I made sure I knew where every gas station was. Oh, yeah. He had a printout of, you know, from here to here, there's this gas station. It was really good. Uh, I, I'm not going to say I'm OCD, but I'm OCD. Well, no, it was um, really helpful. It worked. Yeah, because, I mean, I knew how far the car could go on a tank of gas. And I wanted to make sure I was, you know, I knew, like, for example, the most important thing is finding a restroom. Uh, when you once you bypass San Antonio and you the next major city is El Paso, oh, God. then I mean it's like I mean and you never think El Paso is going to be there. It's like oh El Paso is just a myth at this point. It's never going to happen. <laughs> it's a myth. <laughs> it is until you you know you get there and then you, and then what was really crazy is Solano was tripping over the fact that when you get to El Paso you can look to your left and you can see Mexico. I mean, you see, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I've done it. Yeah, yeah so it, for her, it was like, uh, I don't think you've been that far. No, you, I, I've, the furthest I've been was with you to California. Mm-hmm. I mean, but we were on our way to California that first right. time. But the fir- before we went to that trip, the furthest I'd been away was to go marry you in Vegas. And that was it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's but as far took, away as I'd ever been. We took a plane. We didn't drive. Yeah, first and last time. <laughs> Never take another one. So, John, um, where do we go from here? Uh, um, so we know that you're making uh, a monumental change in your life. And, and I keep telling you, it's good. I mean, I envy you because, you know, you're, you're, you're just you ha- there's so much potential there for the future for you uh, as you head towards Arizona. Um, wh- what are some? What you- well, he, when he first told me you're moving, John, I mm-hmm. wasn't he said something or I didn't hear it right. 
I thought he told me you were moving to Cydonia. I said, he's moving to Mars? <laughs> the Cydonia region. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, where there's the Pleiades, basically, yeah. in, in <laughs> those pyramids there on Mars. My Gene Hackman syndrome was kicking in at the time. I so. could have been me, too. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry to interrupt. No, I'd interject any time. You know, I just but, thought that was funny. <laughs> um, but um, so the future. Um you know, what are some of your plans that you have uh, nailed out coming up? Well, like I said, once once I get there, I, I have a place to stay. I'm staying in a house. Um, Not a van by the river? Uh, no, but I'm, I'm right in an area where there's a lot of great hiking. Um, there's this mountain. I forget the name of the mountain, but it draws a lot of lightning. And it's visible from my uh, from the front yard of where I'm going to be staying. Ooh, cool. So yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. But uh, right down the street is Cathedral Rock, which is uh, actually famous in the world of upwellings of earth energy, where shamans and healers will go and take people with them to you know capture that upwelling of earth energy. It's very spiritual very spiritual rock you can just look at it and feel the spirit of Gaia mother earth you know oozing up through the ground through your feet through your crown chakra up into the sky to meet the heavens it's a magical place but I'm going to start working with uh, not necessarily working with but I want to hook up with Melinda Leslie who was the last show that I did mm -hmm. and remember we got interrupted because right. I had people coming by to buy stuff off Craigslist right um, but <laughs> yeah. UFO hunters I'm sorry UFO sighting tours.com, Melinda Leslie. And um, I'm going to call her in the next day or two and say, Hey, when I get there, I want to go on your tour. And uh, she's done, and this dates back maybe um, five weeks ago or something. Right. But uh, she did 765 tours and never gave anybody their money back because she has a money back guarantee. If you, right. don't, if you don't see anything, you get your money back. I think she had one person, she, she but, said but one, they did not. But they, they were so nice to her, they were yeah. like, just keep the money. Right. We had a good time anyway. Mm -hmm. so, so technically, she never gave right. anybody their money back. It's an impressive track record. It is. Yeah, absolutely. So um, looking forward to meeting her. Uh, there's a lady named Suzanne Ross who has done some interviews with me on Zoom.us which is very similar to Skype, except it's better. And she's got connections with Paramount Pictures, and she's trying to spin some of our interviews at Paramount Pictures. She lives in Sedona. Um, her friend Shakina Rose, who we had on the show, um, remember we were talking about Hertz and the healing property of mm -hmm. frequency vibration? Yeah. Now, she does healing through 528 Hertz, and her and Suzanne Ross are best friends. So I'm gonna meet her out there also. And what's interesting is John's reaching for his book. I met, I met Suzanne <laughs> Ross. Um, she went into a spirit shop. It was called Crystal Magic. Mm -hmm. And Shakina was going to go get a reading from a psychic. And then she just wanted to buy a book and she was going to go sit in the car and read it while her friend was getting a reading. So what does she do? She finds my book in this store. So I'm like, hey, what's the name of the store? I want to call the owners or whoever deals with the books and just find out how they found out about me. Mm -hmm. I call over there. They're like, nobody ever bought that book out of, out of the store ever. I'm the one who deals with all the books. I'm the one who buys them. I'm the one who sells them. I'm the one who catalogs them in the computer. That book has never been sold out of the store. So I call Suzanne Ross back. And I'm like, I know you're not lying. There's zero reason for you to lie about this and make it up. Mm -hmm. And she's like... I absolutely know because I, I know the people. I've lived here, you know, I know I know what store I went right. into. I know what store I went into. There was no mistake. I paid twenty bucks for it. You know, I remember my Yahweh the biblical God is an alien book and I'm like, Well what do you think happened? She said, I just think it magically materialized. <laughs> uh, because she was doing all these different interviews with a number of speakers uh, that were at contact in the desert for this thing she was spinning at Paramount Pictures. Mm -hmm. And she was done with all their interviews until she read my book. And then she's like, wow, I got to get him on the show. But anyway, she happens to live. Her and Shakina are best friends. They both happen to live in Sedona. Javi, Javier Sandoval, um, he owns the Awareness Life Center in Cottonwood, which is about 15 minutes away. Um, uh, there's a guy named Tolek who was on Aquarian Radio with Janet and Karen Christine Patrick and I. Um, who channels aliens and he, he's 
traveling around the country doing conferences. So apparently people are following him and listening to him. He moved from Florida there also. Um, uh, my ministry is out of the University of Sedona. So there's a connection there right. also. Um, and I'm just going to go to every spirit shop. I'm going to go to every awareness life center, every yoga shop, sell myself as a, a Reiki master instructor. Um, but I want to start conducting a class. And this is, this is heavy and this is hard to, to fathom. Mm -hmm. But I can teach certain people, not everybody, but I can teach certain people how to see angels. Hmm. Every woman that has ever lived with me went from not being able to see them to being able to see them before they moved out of my house. Any, any, any roommate that I ever had who lived with me for a prolonged period of time can do it also. And they can, I, I mean, I can get witnesses to attest to it on a show. Is this something you might consider <clears throat> writing about the, in the future? Oh, or, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, I mean, I see spirits. I'm what you call clairvoyant. Now, clairvoyant doesn't mean I'm going to give you a reading. Mm -hmm. Clairvoyant means I see. Right. Okay. I can communicate with them some, but I don't trust myself to be very, very accurate. You know, unlike Elizabeth April, who we've had on Quantum Hologram Matrix, who instead of listening to her guides tell her about you, she taps into your guides and hmm. has them tell, tell her about you, huh. which is very, very different. That is different. Yeah, like Chris Medina. Um, we've interviewed him on Aquarian Radio before. But he, uh, he has his own guide. Okay, most, most psychics, psychic mediums that are really good at it, they have their own guide. Um, but Elizabeth April does it completely different. She talks to your guides. So what I can do is, you know, there's spirits in every room. ET, uh, an extra dimensional can actually be in the same room with you and you don't even know it. They're vibrating at a higher frequency and you can't see them because in this third density, we're not capable of seeing into them unless you know how to traverse your body, mind, spirit and become part of the fifth dimension, become part of the quantum hologram matrix and be able to see into the dimensional realms. And that's something that I can, it's not necessarily me teaching people how to do it. It's me enabling them to unlock that latent ability that they already have. Mm -hmm. So I remember, I remember this old roommate so he's like, I'm like, dude, there's a, there's an angel sitting in the door and he, and he's like, Oh yeah, yeah. Right. And he walks right up to it and he puts his arm around it. I'm like, you are literally putting your arm around it right now. <laughs> and that was, that was the beginning of it. He went to the, I mean, it was a big opening in like a big, you know, go between this room and that room. And there's like a hack there. And you know, he could have gone to the wrong side. He went exactly and put his arm around it. And then like a couple days after that, um, we're sitting in the living room just watching TV and I had a guitar leaning up against an amplifier and we both see this little angel. I don't like to use the word spirit because mm -hmm. that can be negative. I was going so to see, ask why we see, you we see this little angel next mm -hmm. to the guitar, basically right next to the guitar where the guitar was meeting the amplifier and it was right there. And we both looked at it at the same time and he's like, dude, dude, dude. And I'm like, I see what he's seeing. And I'm like, tell me what you see. And he said, I see this little angel. And what this is trippy is that um, if, if you get somebody pregnant from the moment of conception, a soul is brought into that, into the zygote, mm -hmm. basically. Okay. People don't think that, but the moment of conception, a soul is introduced to that now new living organism. Right. So therefore it has a soul. And this girl I was with had a miscarriage and that's the soul. Hmm. That's the soul that follows me around. And I, I call, it's a boy, I call him Baby Angel. Now, uh, I've got a, uh, I just got an idea, question out of this. <laughs> I, I bet I, you I, did. It was like, it just, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, so <laughs> if, if you have a situation where a child is not born and that, that soul is meant to be uh, for that individual, does that soul return to a, um, like a, a well of souls waiting to be reborn? Or do they, I mean, can you enlighten me on this? I guess maybe am I making okay. sense of that? No, it, it's interesting. The, the Egyptians call it the Ba and the Ka, okay? Mm -hmm. 
the uh, the ba is the basically there's your soul and your spirit two different things um but like i said i call everything an angel just because it's more of a negative right. or a more positive connotation but what i'm seeing is what you can call an imprint is that that baby had a soul and a spirit or that fetus or basically zygote that was just right. created had a had a spirit and a soul the soul goes into the quantum hologram matrix and the spirit stays on earth for an extended period of time in an, in another dimension and i can i can't do it with everybody if somebody comes into the situation and doesn't believe me then i will ask them to leave because their energy will mess up the whole process of mm -hmm. trying to see these spirits and that's why i ghost hunt i ghost hunt um i'm not the empath that goes oh this was a a revolutionary war soldier that died in the late 1800s got shot in the head you know i worked with this uh this british lady named claire in orlando and she did that but what they wanted me to do was to find them so i would go find them claire could find them too i mean she didn't need my help mm -hmm. actually they just liked having a team so it was it was this, this very successful attorney british guy his wife but they didn't want they didn't want anybody to know that they were doing it. Right. And I was just their friend. And we would go ghost hunting. Hmm. Yes. You know, and Claire was the real psychic medium who could tell you stuff about it. We could go to historical places that she didn't know anything about. And you could go do the research and she could find out that, you know, this teenage girl died in some kind of agricultural accident, which was an actual thing that happened at a farm that we went to. Mm -hmm. She got run over by some kind of agricultural equipment and wow. died, and her her imprint haunts that farm. Do you, that was uh, an actual case that we did. And as you moved to Arizona, do you have do you know? I mean, do you have an idea that you're going to find um, a lot of the uh, uh, spirits that you're you're or ghosts? I mean, angels, if you will, that are going to be there, or are you just you're just diving into the pool to see if there's that situation. Angels are everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> they're in Florida. They're <laughs> in Arizona. They're right here, uh, you know, in Houston, Texas on Wycliffe Road. You know, I mean, they're, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. They're in everybody's house. They're in everybody's house. Everybody has them. Everybody. So, uh, you know, and a lot of them are your family that is, you know, parents that have passed. You know, uh, so one of my cousins was cheating on his wife, and I was, I was, I was telling him, I'm like, I can feel our grandfather here, and he's like, really? He's like, well, my wife's been out of town. I'm like, oh, and he's like, so he's like, you mean they're really in the room with you? He's like, my grandfather could see what I was doing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're now omnipotent. They can be anywhere that they want to be, depending if they've gone to the light and come back or not. Right. You know, if they haven't, they can be too dense, can't see into higher dimensions, can only see into our dimension and lower dimensions. But, um, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, our grandfather went to the light and he came back and he watches over all of us grandkids. So, hmm. I know that uh, personally, I can say I have not seen angels myself. Um, but um, there have been times when, uh, kind of an, uh, an interesting time when I, uh, um, I had a relative that passed away and I went to the funeral and it was outside and for me the, the wind was blowing and I could see the trees kind of blowing in front of me and it was a very calming effect and, and I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that even though I've never seen an angel, I felt the presence of the person who had passed away. And that wasn't the first time that had happened. Um, when um, my grandmother passed away, um, you know, it was inside a, a, a funeral home. But when we went out, once again, that same feeling, uh, I was looking at a tree and the tree was, you know, the wind was blowing in a certain way. And, and it was a feeling that that left me with um, comfort. And and so that was, you know, an interesting. So once again, you know, like I said, I'd never seen an angel, but I do feel like there was a presence there. And it was a very, in both situations, a very calming effect. 
So you experienced an angel. You don't have to see an angel to feel one. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So therefore, if you don't have to see one to feel one, if you feel one, you still experienced you experienced an angel. I can I can show people, especially since now that's what you call clairsentience. Clairsentience. There's the four clairs: clairvoyant, you see; clairaudient, you hear; claircognizant is basically like downloaded into your mind, and clairsentient is you feel them. So it's also you can call it being an empath. Mm-hmm. So to to a greater or lesser degree. Most humans have one of the four clairs, if not a couple of them. You know, they might have some faculty about them or they might know how to utilize them very, very well. But all humans do. And if they know and understand that they do, then they can really expand that extra dimensional supernatural ability that exists within all of us. Hmm. What, what you got over there? Sarah? Well, I was thinking about that. I was thinking, what do you call it when I... I'll send a message to your brain and say, go to Sonic and pick up a drink before you come home. And then you do it. That's pretty dang cool. That's, that's quantum entanglement or telepathy, but that's pretty cool. Um, you know, the, uh, I guess the em- empathy part, uh, I guess it, it, I can relate to that. Um, I, feel, um, I feel an emotional bond at times. Um, and I could see tapping into that uh, now that you brought that up. And um, I never realized that until now. Did you notice you looked at something on the wall, like, like something pulled your, did something pull your vision over well, to the Well, it was the, the clock to make sure we're on time. Oh, all right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was looking up there. I so, haven't started the call center either. I yeah, meant to do that. We could do that. In I here. was too busy laughing at John, so. Well, you know, <laughs> see, yeah, she don't feel bad. She does that to me all the time. You're John. laughing at me. So, but yeah, it was, uh, you know, I never thought of it as, as, uh, you know, the, the, it was just, you know, when I think back to both those times, John, um, it was a very calming effect. Now, uh, when I say that about my grandmother and this other funeral, my mom was different. It was, the funeral took place at night and, uh, I have, you know, not felt that sensation when my mom passed away and, um, I don't know if I I feel disappointed by that or, um, you know, I don't really talk about her death that much, but I um, uh, found her and it was very, you know, I felt helpless at that time that I couldn't save her when she passed on. Um, And so, but I never received that from my mom. And I think there's a part of me that's disappointed that I didn't get that calming effect that I got from my grandmother and this other funeral that took place and um, um, what what would you say about that John um, that maybe she's not maybe she's not powerful enough to feed you the energy that you require to feel her mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying sure. if you had a good relationship with your mom which I trust that you did you know she's there you just uh, I, I, it's, I don't know. I would have to meditate on this. That's a good well, question. Well, well, let me ask you this. Um, you know, when, when, they, when people pass on in general, um, is it something that, that they, too, have to go on a journey of, of sorts? to? So th- this is heavy stuff. In my Yahweh book, Yahweh the Biblical God is an Alien, which is available on johnpolkmedia.com. That's, once again, johnpolkmedia.com. <laughs> um, I talk about how if you pray to aliens, and we are taught to pray to aliens, that's the whole premise behind my book, okay? Mm -hmm. Exodus 11, God killed the firstborn Egyptian sons. I do not understand how people cannot understand that. You know, what part of that do you not understand? It's not open to interpretation. He killed children. And since he's an extraterrestrial, he asked them to paint in uh, lambs or goat's blood on the doorway. On the doorway, so they knew the difference between the Israelites and the Egyptians. Now, how do you not know the difference? Right. You know, you're God. You're supposed to know the difference when you go and kill everybody. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it just it, 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 it kills me. But if you pray to God in the Bible um, and you believe that God is God in the Bible, then you go into what we call his quantum hologram matrix. You go into his false version of heaven and cycle through his false version of heaven, creator God aliens that are very, very advanced, actually have their own afterlife 
they do, that you go through. They made us to worship them so that we would go through their own physical life and their own afterlife so that they could take possession of our souls when we die. Basic concept, you know, like in the in the mummy and other movies. Mm -hmm. They want possession of your soul because they gain power from it. They gain power from your prayer energy and they gain power from your soul to help them build their own supernatural relationship. Um, and now, it's funny, they worship the universal God consciousness. They worship Source, or in Star Wars you could call it the Force. Pick, the, pick your side, dark side or the light side. It's easier to go to the dark side. You get results much quicker, but you pay for it on the back end. Right. You go to the light, it takes longer. It's more sacrifice. It's more painful spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically. What do they say about the reward? If is if if the uh, the harder the uh, the road, uh, the sweeter the reward. Is yeah. that what we're dealing with here? Yeah, and eventually your soul will cycle out of these creator god aliens false version afterlifes. You know, it's interesting, very interesting, in multiple cultures around the world, even off the island of Gavrinus, there are maps of where your soul, your soul is supposed to go in the afterlife and guess where it takes them to or is that star constellations oh really yes all throughout egypt even in peru even off the small island of gavrinus off the coast of france really these star maps are telling your soul where to go and how to get there in the afterlife hmm. and it leads to planets and star constellations think about it right where do the ETs come from? Well, which star constellations are they? They're most notably Orion, mm -hmm. Sirius, the Pleiades, and Cygnus, which is also known as the Northern Cross. Right. And this is, you know, all through uh, the Hopi and the desert southwest where I'm going to be living now, they have those same star maps. They have those same star maps. Isn't that amazing? And it's just so overlooked and nobody's really even talking about it, but I'm talking about it. It's, it's, it's important and uh, it doesn't receive enough attention that how an alien can create an afterlife for your soul. Right. It's pretty amazing. But eventually your soul will cycle out of the matrix and will eventually go to the God light. Very fascinating subject, John. And, and, and <laughs> So let's go ahead and take our top of the hour break. Okay. Uh, you're listening to Space Boy Universe on the SBU Network. Uh, our, t our guest tonight is Reverend John Polk in studio. Uh, which is pretty exciting, and Solana's in there chatting it up with all the space cadets. So don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back after this. They're still talking about how this is a test. This is a test. This is a test. Test, 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 test. This is a test to the SBU network.
is a test. This is a test. This is a test. Test, 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 test. This is a test to the SBU network. It is indeed a test. You know, uh, this is a commercial time, by the way, everyone. Um, uh, Space Boy here. Uh, you know, I have music that you can check out, possibly buy at a very affordable price on spaceboymusic.com. In fact, my latest album, Unique Technique, is out there. And for $10, you get 17 wonderful tracks. Um, go over there. There's other music beside the uh, the Unique Technique album you can check out. And uh, like this music that's just been playing, will probably be on a future album. Um, but uh, this song was originally just used as a uh, broadcasting test song. So I hope you've enjoyed that. But as always, uh, check out Space Boy Music when you get a chance. And, um, you know, listen to the tunage there. So we're back. I am with my lovely host. It's uh, Space uh, Boy's right and gal and that is Serlana <laughs> and she's over there giggling and <laughs> enjoying the chat room but of course uh, we're here with Reverend John Polk because I am so envious of him mm. because oh. he says he'll be driving through Lufkin do you know what is in Lufkin oh yes the cleanest bathrooms in the world no Lufkin Ralph oh. and Kaku's oh. seafood restaurant but don't they oh have a, my god don't they have a Bucky's up there too well, that's nice, but, you know, Ralph and Kaku's <laughs> is uh, something out of my hometown. Yeah, but it's in Texas. You say uh, there's nothing good But they're wise. using the menu from my hometown, and yeah. they've got all the good stuff. It just, man, if I had money and time, <laughs> I would be up there. Anyway, so let's get back with our conversation with, with Reverend John Polk. Oh, thank you, Catalina. I appreciate that. Um, she's saying she loves my music. So, uh, yeah, I'll have some. I'm working on new music. She also said it was good to hear John's voice again. Yes, it's always good to hear John's voice because it's so bellowy and professional. <laughs> and uh, um, but uh, you know, uh, so we were talking, and um, uh, you, like I said, you really gave me uh, some kind of new knowledge when I told you about experiencing. Uh, the calming effect that I had experienced with uh, at those funerals, um, you know, it's it's just really a fascinating read um, for your book, and people should check out Yahweh, the Biblical God, and get their own copy of that. Um, but as we move forward, w let's move out into the universe because you're saying that God is an alien, <laughs> and yes. so I heard he was a DJ. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about more about that. There is God. There is what you call the universal God consciousness, mm -hmm. which means it is the summation of all energy. Can even be called the astral plane and the zero point field. God has been interpreted as such. Right. Um, but there is a universal God consciousness. There is source in Star Wars. They call it the Force. There is an absolute, all powerful, omnipotent power. And the power that you get in your life is from what you put into the universal God consciousness, and that's what you get out of it. So if you're a good person, you're going to get more good out of it, even though life may not treat you that well, mm -hmm. and vice versa. So I remember Eric Von Daniken put it better than anybody else I'd ever heard, and it took me years of watching Ancient Aliens for it to sink in. But in every culture around the world, it's the same story. The gods descended from the skies in fiery chariots and either seeded our planet with life, uh, created us and um, interbred with us, or added their own genetics to us, mm -hmm. like the Anunnaki did, right? Uh, or, or actually brought their own people from another planet to live here, like uh, a lot of the Zuni Pueblo tribes lived here for a certain amount of time, the Maya lived here for a certain amount of time, and then vanished and left our planet. So... Uh, combination all of all of those but every culture from all over the world has their own story of the gods descending to earth creating mankind and giving us technology and as long as we obeyed them and worshiped them which is what they wanted us to do mm -hmm. they created us to do that as long for the most part they were benevolent to us and they set up rituals so that we would worship them the whole thing was set up for us to worship them as if they were god Quetzalcoatl 
and Viracocha. Viracocha was more uh, the god of the Inca, and Quetzalcoatl was one of many gods of the Maya. They both came down to Earth and told the indigenous that they were the grand architects of the entire universe. Well, you can't have two grand architects of the entire universe. Right. Quetzalcoatl was said to have had white skin and long blonde hair, which is, you know, <laughs> that's not even like the indigenous culture that he was the god of. He didn't even look like him. So you, 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 you bring up an interesting thought here is that the, these aliens came down and where did the aliens go? I'm sorry. Say that again. Uh, I, I was I was saying. I'm reminded of the the show, and I hate to use sci-fi show right now, but here here goes nothing. Stargate. Um, you had these different um, um, races that uh, Apophis was one in, in Egypt, and it, and this is what it reminds me of is that where did they you know they were here, where did they go? Um, these aliens that uh, you know the Mayans. You were talking about them. Mm -hmm. um, you know. It seems like they were here heavily in history, and then all of a sudden they're gone. Or, or are they still here? They're just not showing themselves now. Or they're waiting for some kind of plan or some... Can you tell me where they're at now? They never left, actually. Okay. okay. They never left. Um, pr uh, what's his name? Uh, Prime Minister Medvedev of the Soviet Union was on TV and thought he was off camera. And he was telling the reporter... If you had any clue how many human alien hybrids that there are on this planet right now, mm -hmm. okay? Sun Shi Li, um, who used to work for the Defense Ministry of China, said the same thing publicly. If you had any clue how many human alien hybrids that look just like us, the only difference is that they are more advanced than us mentally and cerebrally, and they can actually make us do things with their minds so they're they, they're here and they look they could be walking down the street and we wouldn't even know it and i mean or or is that an accurate representation or why would they go in hiding or in or why they're, they're hiding in plain sight uh, uh, they're wearing human meat suits okay I mean, in, in my opinion most of our i mean not to go there too much but most of our current elected officials around the world are human draco reptilian hybrids mm -hmm. that look perfectly human you cut them open anatomically they look human but they have that reptilian complex in their brain and they right. are the people that basically rule our planet and brad olson and i and eric were talking about that about a month and a half ago on on quantum hologram matrix right you know it's a sensitive topic so often things happen to your your <laughs> signal. <laughs> signal integrity is always not always, but sometimes compromised when you talk about it. But in, anyway, I could go into detail who they are. So uh, <laughs> I guess uh, we could always jump to the 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 you know it's to me what is the end game? What I believe the end game is is I believe that the Draco reptilians bred into the ruling class of this planet thousands of years ago. Now, who was the ruling class of this planet? It was the Anunnaki. Mm -hmm. The Anunnaki colonized this whole planet, created life on this planet, interbred with humans. Um, and at one point, they pulled out. Why? Because they were going to go do it on another planet. That's what they do. They don't just colonize one planet. They colonize planets all over the solar system, whether it's on the terrestrial surface or underground, mm -hmm. okay? Um, they do it all around the Milky Way galaxy. They do it all around Andromeda, our neighboring galaxy that is twice as big as our galaxy, uh, and other dimensions as well. So imagine I'm a creator god alien, and I have 27 planets. So how much prayer energy and how many souls are going to go through mm -hmm. my quantum hologram okay. matrix and make me extra powerful? And, and it's like an ego thing. Like, well, you only have, you know, you know, 27 planets. Well, I've got 47 and I have that many more, <laughs> that much more prayer energy and that much more souls going through me as a creator God alien. So the more uh, planets uh, that are seated by them, then that energy, I guess, creates more. So that leads me to believe, is there the ultimate Anunnaki? Uh, well, here's or, a good example is that Mars was colonized before us. Mm -hmm. There's actually a Giza plateau on Mars. 
There's the Cydonia region uh, of Mars, that, right. which mirrors the Pleiades. Which is not the place you're moving to. No. 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 Well, <laughs> I they, got it now. They did it there first. <laughs> they did it here. Mm -hmm. And at one time, there was life on Mars and on Earth at the same time. There's still life on Mars. It just went underground because right. it, can be, it can be 70 degrees during the day, but minus 200 at on night. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, so it, it's inhospitable. Uh, but there is life underneath the surface of really most celestial bodies out there most of them serve as bases like the moon mm -hmm. and you know we just don't know it because you know nasa never right. never a straight answer nasa <laughs> buries absolutely everything and that's it's been protocol since the beginning right so um i guess uh as we move from that uh Man, it's just mind-blowing subject matter, to you know, be honest with you. Giza John. means Mars. Cairo means Camp of Mars. Well, and That's no accident. Well, you know, even when you deal with the, the face on Mars, I don't know what your opinion on that is. but uh, They blew is, it up. Is, is, yeah, I was going to say. They blew it up. Yeah. They, they blew it up. They literally nuked it. <laughs> Brett Collins Shepard, who Karen Christine Patrick, my editor of my books, that's her boyfriend, research partner. Um, he's the first one who told me that, and I didn't know. But it's true. You, you, you can find it online. Was it, uh, from what you know of it, did they blow it up because it was like, um, well, the technology is getting so advanced to where it's going to be obvious that we would know? Mm -hmm. or Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Ooh, that's just... That's frustrating. Um, but, but even though you have the face on Mars, you still have, you know, I followed Richard Holguin's work um, mm -hmm. and, and, and da dabbled in that for a while. Um, you still have the, 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 the pyramid-shaped uh, uh, um, city area that uh, doesn't get talked about. I mean, they always seem like, okay, the face on Mars is not a face. End of subject. Um, you don't talk about the other hyper-dimensional physics that's involved in the the math that's involved with this this city that's laid off, uh, I guess, a couple miles away from this face. And I find that very frustrating um, that uh, we don't take pictures of that. Um, because, you know, in nature, we don't see... It's just like when we're talking to you that we talk to... Uh, Dr. Um, uh, Samir? Samir Osmanagic. Osman oh, Sam Osmanagic. Osmanagic, uh, actually. Sam Osmanagic. Some yeah. days I can pronounce from, it, some from days Bosnia. I can't. From Bosnia. You, you probably stood in a mirror f or for five hours trying to... <laughs> Sam Osmanagic. But, but, yeah. but like with the Bosnian pyramids, you know, the thing is that uh, clearly you have edges cut a certain way. Um, you have proof of the, the cement technology that they used to do this you have um, this channel of water that uh, you know runs through these pyramids you have the frequencies if you will that are resonating and yet people are still having a hard time swallowing the fact well, that people in his professional yeah, community that's what i should not mean. just people in general but but i mean uh, science has always been that way and you know science you get uh, the people who write these journals and they say this is the truth and they don't, I guess, uh, leave way for, well, there's new facts. Because, you know, I guess they're so invested in their history and their pension and all that stuff that they're afraid to be open to whatever's coming down. And I guess what I'm getting at back to is that clearly these, the site in Sidonia is that uh, the, the city clearly has geometric shapes and yet people and I'm going and I'm saying people scientists in general are kind of like denouncing it excuse me for a second I'm getting choked up over here <laughs> and that is live broadcasting oh sorry I guess I could have <laughs> yeah, hummed a tune while you did that you could have <clears throat> I guess I'm getting that drainage though which yeah. is a good thing so what say you, John? I know you're, you're like mesmerized with the chat room here right now. And I haven't been in one in <laughs> probably two months. I, I, so. it, it feels good, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, you know, it was it was so hard to get out of my house and that whole story. Um, it's it's nice to, you know, I don't have a mortgage anymore. I don't have a house anymore. Uh, it's, it's good to be like a, a rebel on this pilgrimage mm -hmm. out west to, you know. It's freedom. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's 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 a total trip, and I it's funny. I sit around and go, I can't believe what I just did, 
you know, like I, I've, I've, I've thought, man, maybe I should move back. And I'm like, no, what am I doing? What am I even thinking that for? I've lived there for so long. I lived in the same house for 15 years. My house was built on an Indian reservation, so it was totally haunted. <laughs> Which was, Every time you say that, I, I cool. think of the movie Poltergeist. And you know, when, when Eric came to my house and stayed the night, it was full on Poltergeist. That's for sure. <laughs> you can ask him about it. And I told him it would happen. And it's funny because he heard voices coming from my bedroom. And, and he was like, who were you talking to? I was like, I wasn't talking to anybody. I was sleeping. You know, sometimes I hear voices coming from my bedroom. And I know it's Sherlana just talking to herself. So... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, you know, speaking of Eric, Eric, you know, you can call any time if you want to br- uh, bring it on in. Uh, it's quite all right. So, you know, you can do so. So, John, what else can we cover here? Um, I mean, you've blown my mind about the, the Yahweh aspect, uh, the the Anunnaki and, and, and colonizing different planets for the power that they can get off the souls um and he's reaching for another book here right, let's, uh, yeah, let's, since let's, we're going there I might as well <laughs> shameless plug for myself no it's quite all right it's a great a great segue uh, the blue beans um let's uh, talk about that he's calling you oh. want to take the call yeah let's yeah, go ahead to, yeah we could say the, that book in just a second here yeah eric are you there eric yeah you guys hey how are you my friend john was telling some great stories so i didn't really want to interrupt but figured i'd just kind of hang out and listen to you guys talk and then i, I know we're tired of yeah, dealing with you because we deal with you every <laughs> wednesday night uh, on the quantum hologram matrix where you can hear guest hosts know, space boy and serana and eric <laughs> <laughs> i know it gets, it gets tiring talking on the radio all the time because uh, i i can i know there was a time i don't know if you guys remember john did like uh, 200 shows in 200 days some some ridiculous amount of shows all over the world. No, really. I and I was just shocked. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, it's a true story. Tell that story, John, because, I mean, how, when was that time span? Because it was blowing my mind, actually. It was right before I quit doing my show, actually. Um, and also, I got an offer to do Revolution Radio from 6 to 8 Eastern, five days a week after Sean David Morton <laughs> fled the chicken coop <laughs> and was running for his life. Um, and, and that came right at the toes of me trying to sell my house. Mm-hmm. You know, it happened right around the time we went to, uh, uh, no, right around the time we did the Melinda Leslie show. Hmm. And that was the last show I did. Yeah. And, and it just, it just figured, um, that, you know, opportunity like that would present itself. But I told you, I'm happy. I'm happy with the SBU network and I'm even happier to be not driving 11 hours. I tell you what, so yeah. feels good. Uh, Feels good to be here. So, Eric. Yeah, I, I drove 11 hours today, also, by the way. Oh, okay. So, I'm not in an elite group by myself. <laughs> right there with you. <laughs> no, I know the feeling, man. I was pretty exhausted. So, I came from, uh, war, what is it, uh, Rock something, Rock something, Wyoming. I can't even think of the name. It was Rock something, anyway, in Wyoming, all the way to Pueblo, New Mexico. Hey, or, did, no, Pueblo, Pueblo, Colorado. Did you visit Bighorn Medicine Wheel in Wyoming? No, we did not uh, have time, but uh, I will be going back because the guy, we ended up uh, staying with uh, Stan Romanak's father and uh, the the amount of information that he was downloading into my brain. By the time that day was over, I just needed to go home and sleep because I was so exhausted from just absorbing, you know, his his, uh, life history and all his information that he was sharing with us. What what can you share? Yeah, what can you digested. share with us? Yeah, what can you share with us about that experience? Well, it's uh, the whole purpose. The main purpose was to go and uh, listen to Stan Romanak uh, testify at his trial. You know, for the uh, child molestation, and it turned out uh, Monday afternoon after lunch. Then they came back for the second half of the Monday uh, defense uh, case. They were. They had about seven witnesses and Stan Romanek ready to testify. And then somehow during lunch, the uh, defense and the prosecution got together uh, with the judge, I'm sure. And it was determined that, uh, I don't know, obviously we'll never know this part, but it was determined that they weren't going to call these other seven witnesses and Stan Romanek was not going to be testifying. 
uh, Stan Romanak was willing and ready to testify, but they, his, uh, he was advised not to by his attorneys. And anyway, the case ended up uh, in two hours. It was decided, which was shocking, because uh, I, I really thought that they were going to go not guilty. Um, but anyway, that's a whole long story. But so the deal was is that Stan Romanak's father lives in Wyoming, which is about a five-hour drive from Loveland, Colorado. And I'd met him uh, two weeks prior in Las Vegas, and we kind of hit it off, so he invited me to uh, come to his house, even though the verdict was not a positive verdict. He wanted my uh, in- my impressions, he wanted my thoughts, he wanted all the details that I absorbed in the two days that I was there. And I says, well, I could come and I'll sh- talk to you in person about it, because over, th- over the telephone, it just was... Uh... Anyway, so I went down there, uh, and then the young lady that was with me, Stephanie, uh, she's from Phoenix, Arizona, uh, it was almost like like we're a little fox and molder, you know, kind of scully, <laughs> being a scully kind of deal. Or you, mean, you mean scully, <laughs> fox and molder? Yeah, whatever fox it was, and we were, we were doing our little. Uh, yeah, we were doing our little investigation, and she was uh, actually pr- quite impressive because I would tell her some information, and she goes, she didn't know about it, and then the next day. She had, she, like at nighttime, she would research it and she'd read up on And then the next day she would tell me stuff that I didn't even know. So she was educating me. So by the time like two or three days went by, uh, we both had a really much larger picture of who Stan Romanek is, which was pretty amazing because uh, he's actually an artist. I don't know a lot of people. He was a professional flute player and traveled the world playing the flute. Did you guys know that? <laughs> no. Yeah, I had I'd, uh, known yeah. little things like that. Yeah. Oh, and he was a fashion, yeah. fashion designer. Uh, I mean, just, yes, uh, just the, the, and he tried out for the Olympics. Exactly. Yep. Uh, so, the, and a lot of other things, but uh, yeah. So, anyway, um, Stan's dad is ninety years old. His name is Stanis, Dr. Stanislav Ojak. Um, he worked for the Stanford Research Institute. Uh, he also was recruited to work uh, for the government. And I did ask him, uh, I said, listen, I understand that if you, and he did tell me even before I asked this question, it, he said, yeah, there was top secret projects. So the question I asked him on the follow-up was that sometimes when you work in these projects, it's my understanding that over a period of years, you are not allowed to discuss it, but then there's other types of uh, projects that you're never allowed to discuss. And I said, Are, did you work in any projects that you can t- just touch on briefly? And he said, uh, he gave me a few little things, but he says, I am really forbidden to speak about any of this till, till the day I can never speak about it. In other words, he's got uh, a lifetime ban on what he can say. But he was smart enough to tell me stories uh, and explain things to me in, in kind of metaphors uh, and paint pictures in a, without actually telling me, you know, directly things. And so it, 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 I kind of telepathically was picking up on what he was telling me. And, um, yeah, that, that's a whole show, but I just wanted to kind of, I don't want to talk too long here, but that, it was, it was awesome. Let me tell you, it was awesome. It's like a 90 year old sage that, that just to sit there in his presence for, uh, he prays every day. This guy's amazing. He prays three times a day. He's written all his own prayers and he showed me, He's got boxes of prayers that he's been writing his entire life since he's 12 years old, and he's got them all memorized. And I, you know, who would have thought? Uh, morning, afternoon, evening, and sometimes four times a day, he does these prayers. And uh, very spiritual man. Uh, he works with the Baha'i group. Uh, I don't know if you guys, I've never heard of Baha'i. Have either of you heard of Baha'i? I've never heard of it. No. Baha'i, uh, we're going to want to learn about this Baha'i group. Uh, one of the things that Mr. Uh, Ojak told me was that the, uh, he traveled the world studying religion. Uh, he, was a, he was also a psychologist, and he's also an engineer, and he had other talents as well. He's a psychic as well. Um, he proved that to me when I think I told you guys that story before when I was driving up to uh, Utah, and he asked me where I was going to stay in Utah, and I said, I'm not sure. I'd have to, I need to look it up on my iPad because I had it closed at the moment. And he goes, are you staying in uh, St. George? And I said, as a matter of fact, I am. How did you know that? And he said, I just knew. And so that was his little demonstration that he knew where I was staying. And, he had, and I'd never even talked to him for like three weeks prior to that. He had no idea where anything. It was no hints either. It was kind of bizarre. So uh, anyway, the man's just an amazing man. Uh, then uh, he, he told us about these slides that he had. He had the 289 slides. And uh, he kind of teased us about that. And then so we had to come back for the second day to watch, to watch these slides. And uh, 
I don't know. I don't know if he knows how he does it, but he can take pictures with a regular, like thirty-five millimeter camera, not a non-digital camera, and with a lens cap over the lens. And he's taking these. Uh, and I, I have these pictures. I took a few pictures of these pictures that he takes, where he, literally it it can capture the images through the lens cap, but in a distorted, like multi-dimensional way, where you have to picture. You're seeing uh, lights and movements and things that you would not see on a regular picture if you were just snapping it with the lens cap off. So uh, he somehow has got, he's able to do this. Uh, people like Uri Geller, uh, Dr. Tiller, I, all these very famous people um, have been studying him and how it is that he's able to take these pictures with a lens cap on. It's like psychic pictures almost. Um, and then he pulls out, and then towards the halfway through his little slide presentation, they uh, start rolling out some alien, alien pictures, uh, different types of aliens, pictures that he's taken, uh, some some ghost-looking type aliens that were kind of, you can see through. Uh, but I, I took about three or four pictures, and then he asked me not to take any more because he's going to publish a book, and he's going to have all these pictures in the book. So he asked me, he says, you can keep those pictures for yourself, but do not publish those pictures or, or put them on the public. But uh, he's going to be releasing his book pretty soon. So you guys, I can show you guys privately. I just can't tweet them out right now. But they're amazing pictures. Totally amazing. Never seen anything like it before. Never in my like, life. So he's got the cap on like a non-digital camera and he's taking pictures. I mean, uh, they may be distorted, but I mean, can you make anything out of the distortions? Oh yeah, you can see the the people. You can actually see the uh, the humans, but there. Then you see like another human right behind the human, and you see uh, like lights blaring off them, like energy patterns, like auras. He explained it. Okay, here's uh, here's the good news, John Polk. This is actually good news. So when Javi has his seminar in October, uh, I invited uh, this this gentleman, Doctor uh, Stanislav Ojak, to come and speak and show his slides at Hobby's uh, Whole Life Expo. Well, I'm speaking yeah. there also. Yeah. It's very possible that I'll be the yeah. opening speaker. So I'm excited about that. And, oh, man, Dr. Ojak. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. He's going to bring his pictures to you guys. I'm sure he'll show us. You'll see everything that I saw. And then uh, he's got, I've got his book. He just gave me his book when I left. It's not published yet. He gave me a CD version, but I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. But uh, he's looking for a publisher, so I thought Brad Olson would be good or maybe even uh, Richard Dolan, but I'm thinking Brad Olson probably would be the guy. Dude, I asked Brad Olson to publish my next book, and he said, well, in 2020, I can do it. So he is. Oh, that's right. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, he's literally yeah. booked up until 2020. Um, but um, yeah. Karen Christine Patrick and Brett Colin Shepard can show him some options that are cost effective. For example, Gumroad only takes uh, 0.75% of your ebook. So if you sell your book for 10 bucks, they only take 75 cents. Yeah, I think he just wants to get it out there. So if he can. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll connect. I'll connect them together too. Because uh, aren't they in New Mexico? Also, where, where are they at in New Mexico? Um, so, from where I am now in Houston, I go two hours north to Lufkin to see my cousins on my dad's side. Then I go to Dallas and see my cousins and extended family on my mom's side. And then from there, I drive to Berlin, New Mexico, which is about eleven hours uh, out into the desert southwest um, from Dallas. And that's where Brett Colin Shepard and Karen Christine Patrick, and they live real close to Ken Johnston, um, the former Apollo astronaut trainer. Um, and she and Brett helped him publish four books. So, I mean, if, if he needs any kind of uh, help with publishing, they, can, they could possibly help. Okay. And what city are they in in, in, in New Mexico? Berlin. It, Berlin. It's about uh, 45 minutes outside of Albuquerque. Okay, I'm looking. I'm looking right now. Oh, there it is. I see it. Okay. So yeah, I can actually come through there because uh, Dulce is at the top. So I, when I come down, I can. If I, like, it's not too far away from Dulce. Huh. And you're gonna meet I up talked with to, uh, Brian. Brian. Uh, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, Brian. Uh, he talked. I asked him because uh, I haven't talked to him for since Javi. Uh, he was at Javi's uh, thing uh, several months back. I forget when it was, but several months ago. And uh, anyway, Brian's brother just recently saw a Bigfoot on the property there by the by the uh, Dulce Mountain base, and he's told me uh, 
on the several, he's told me several occasions where multiple people in their family have seen the Bigfoot. And uh, so I don't know. I mean, it'd be a long shot if I was lucky enough to see a Bigfoot, but I'm going to go just go out there and just kind of get a feel for the whole thing and experience and maybe, you know, take a good strong look at that mountain and maybe study. And hopefully the sky has been kind of, it's been rainy and cloudy over here. So we haven't really, I haven't really been able to do any sky watching, which I'm hoping I can do some sky watching while I'm in uh, Dulce at least. You know, believe it or not, in the desert southwest, this is their rainy season, and it ends uh, near the end of September. So when I get there, you know, I was wanting to connect with Melinda Leslie, but she cancels during this time of year. She'll cancel. If she, if there's any doubt that it's going to rain or be cloudy and mess it up, where she'll have to get people their money back, she'll she'll just cancel. And I don't blame her at all. You know, I don't, I don't blame her at all. I wouldn't want to bring people out on a cloudy night. Can't really see anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but won't so there is a you. UFO watchtower uh, also that uh, is in uh, San Luis uh, Valley here in Colorado, which is not too far from where I am. So I might drive through there and take a look at that too. But anyway, it's, it's, yeah, it's interesting. I'm exhausted to be honest with you. I've, I've driven a total of like three days, basically, and over a period of seven days. Uh, you're yeah, a machine, so man. Like- you're a mechanism. <laughs> but it's like you're on this mission to proliferate the the global message. You know, you are an integral yeah. part of disclosure, as we all are. So, you know, your your actions do not go unappreciated. Plus, yeah, you help us get. Plus, you it. help us get good guests. <laughs> Spe- speaking of which, uh, <laughs> Eric, what is the uh, next Wednesday show looking like? I don't even know. Uh, Stanislav, though, he already said he would do the show, but I don't know. Uh, oh, cool. He could probably do two hours, but um, he's uh, he he does take a nap. He gets up early, then he takes a nap in the afternoon, then he goes to bed kind of early. But um, he's uh, yeah, he he's got. What I'd have to do is he's got so much information. We'd have to figure out what we want him to talk about ahead of time. That way, we can kind of feed him and drive him, guide him along, so he can discuss things that uh he's really into consciousness i mean he's a very spiritual man uh he's very kind he's I, i'll tell you this uh, and i'm not just saying this he's probably the kindest most loving most respectful polite man i've ever met in my life and i'm that's, that's what i'm saying a lot right there <laughs> i'm not kidding around yeah well, that's that's pretty he's a pretty amazing guy he's very very uh generous and kind and uh, just I didn't. I couldn't pick up on one flaw in that guy's personality or his demeanor. He was just like, he was an A plus. He's a jewel. Well, whatever it is, uh, if we do end up having him on the quantum hologram matrix, um, it'll be great. Either way, uh, I'm sure that we can tap. Uh, since you're in New Mexico, uh, we could possibly talk about the, the rich history of the Dulce Wars. Um, and, uh, yeah. so, you know, fascinating area of the country that you're in. And of course, uh, you know, it's always a treat to talk to you. And, uh, I was telling John before the show, um, how, you know, I've gotten to know you better and, and it's, we've had fun doing the show and of yeah, course, we have, I agree. Yeah. So, uh, we've kept the seat warm for you, John. We're not trying to steal your show or anything. <laughs> no, it, Hey, the show's in good hands and, um, I, I'm I'm not worried about anything. Everything is good. You're keeping the pulse, mm-hmm. you know. Well, good, good. So, yeah, just, you know, I guess at the very least, you know, let's talk about the Dulce Wars if uh, if if something yeah. changes. You know, uh, I love talking about that story. And, uh, and uh, like I said, you're in an area of the country that we can talk about that. Uh, the underground tunnels that are snaked out through the uh, Great American Southwest. Yeah, supposedly from there all the way to Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So lots of information. I'm hoping to hear some stories from the from the Native Indians that, uh, you know, maybe I'll hear some good stories, which I'm sure I will, from Brian and his family, and I can share some of those stories as well. That's that's always fun to do. Cool, cool. Uh, anything else you want to add before you cut out? That's, that's about it. I'm uh, I'm a, I'm running low on the battery, so I'll probably just let you guys finish up here since it's your show anyway. Well, I appreciate that because you know uh, we don't want you to call our show by something else. So, <laughs> 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 and uh, but you know we love you here at the universe, and uh, you know we look forward to talking to you Wednesday on the Quantum Hologram Matrix. Right on. Okay, John. I'll talk to you soon. You guys have a good night. I'll listen in on the uh, speaker. All right. Thanks, Eric. Good night. All right. Bye. All right. Yeah, so fascinating. Uh, There you go from Eric, you know. 
I didn't realize that he drove back from Colorado to Wyoming and two, <laughs> two, spent two days, not one day, but two days. Um, you know, it, it, I really think he should write his own book. I mean, his adventures. I mean, I, I would definitely read that. You know, it, it's funny. As, as, as not humble as Eric is, he's totally humble in that respect. Mm-hmm. He really is. He, you know, he doesn't want the attention, although he, he does, but he doesn't. Right. I, I, <laughs> I, I've kind of seen that go back and forth. Yeah. Um, but um, he, he, he wants attention brought to his research. Right. But he doesn't necessarily want to be the one to get all the credit for right. it. I, mean, he, I, I see what you're saying where he, he, he presents everything in front of him. Um, but he, you know, because I've had a conversation with him where, okay, don't it's not about me it's let's you know let's focus on this and i like that and it was very refreshing because it was like i can tell when he the way he expressed that it was like it's it's about this and getting it out to the people yeah and he'll give me nuggets and um i often forget to give him credit for it but you know Mm -hmm. he'll give me nuggets and he doesn't care if i bring up his name or not Mm -hmm. he just wants the information out there Right, and it's good to have people like that out there. Oh yeah, I was telling you when I first met Eric, he was so afraid. Mm-hmm. You know, he was literally afraid to talk about anything over the phone. <laughs> you know, he's worried about spooks in his computer right. and everything else. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then now, now <laughs> <laughs> he's he's out there. Uh, I was surprised by how tall you told us he is. Uh, I, I really didn't realize he was. You know, he was up there. Yeah, he's he's tall. He's tall. It, it's funny because when he was at the MUFON Symposium in Las Vegas, um, he was hanging out with Janet and Sasha Lesson, and Janet is maybe four foot eleven. And when you <laughs> right. when you, you see the, those two <laughs> next to each other, uh, it, it's it's funny. But yeah, Janet wants Eric to be part of the panel discussions on Revolution Radio oh. with us. Wow. Now. Well, he's definitely got the information, and uh, he does. And and Janet asked me, you know, what do you what do you think about Eric being on the panel discussions? I'm like, you absolutely, must get him on these panel discussions. Mm-hmm. He is so hungry for information. He unearths information before a lot of people do. Right. And you know, he's he's so uh, meticulous and OCD about finding out every little right <laughs> the, the picky just, date well, just detail. Like, just like dealing with yeah. Stan Romanek's dad, you know, it's like. Um, you know, I guess, you know, he was there and, you know, he introduced himself and, um, he, uh, next thing you know, he's spending two days in Wyoming getting to know his dad. I mean, uh, and he was invited into the man's yeah, house. Yeah, exactly. You know? It wasn't like he forced himself on it. The, uh, he was invited with open arms. I mean, it, it's, that's one thing, you know, as I've and, gotten and to know. And swarmed to secrecy. Yeah. Open when I've gotten to stuff. know Eric, it, it just, he surprises me. But then as I know him more, it's like, okay, I'm not really surprised because now I see the whole picture. And it's, he's just, as I like to say, he's a righteous dude. <laughs> and, uh, you know, coin, uh, taking the phrase from Ferris, Ferris Bueller. <laughs> um, and when I say that, uh, I really mean it. It's, 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 it's a good, he's a good, good dude. I appreciate him. Hey, he's on our collective team, so mm-hmm. win-win for us. <laughs> well, John, how are you feeling? You feeling okay? Yeah. So are far, you... I'm so far, I'm okay, man. Okay, just checking on you. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna fall out before the end of the show. Sure. But for right now, we got about another 15 minutes. We didn't take the bottom of the bo- bottom break, but oh. do you feel like we can go 15 more minutes, and then, you know, I I can cut you loose, and then you can go zone out and. I, you know, I don't know. I, I may just sit here and, and be, be quiet. Okay, okay no which, problem. Which is very difficult for me to even comprehend. Sure, because <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we got uh, stuff that we could talk about. And uh, Gigi, you're also a righteous dude, too. I mean, anybody that would be willing to come from Katie to Comic Palooza to sit down and talk to the universe, you're all right in my book as yeah, well. Yeah, that was cool. That yeah. picture you know, of him. You know, he lives locally. I, we yeah, should have well, we should have invited him. I, 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 ha- I will be the first to admit that I feel bad because here, I, w- I know we're not that far from him. And, oh well, and, and he it, asked me, "What are you doing tonight?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm doing the show at Space Boys." And then, and then after the fact, I was like, "Oh, oh man, maybe I should have <laughs> imposed on you know, when, Jim to I, invite gonna, him over." I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna say this right now. One day we'll get Gigi in into the studio. 
and I will commit to that and uh, it's just finding the right day to get him in here. I owe him a, a lunch at uh, what we call the House of Pies, which is a great uh, oh, sp- House place. Of Pies. Sounds there. yummy. It is very yummy. Yummy. Oh, yes. And so, Gene, uh, uh, not Gene, but hey, Gene, if you were here, I would definitely buy you uh, around. Uh, <laughs> you're a great American. Um, but as far as uh, Gigi, you, you know, you're on my list, sir. I, I don't, I haven't forgot about you. I mean, there we go. That's what I'm going to say. So, so, yeah, Gigi and I are going to go kick it in the cultural district tomorrow night. <laughs> Has he given you an idea? Where you I, I, we're probably going to go look at art. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I, was, don't, I don't know what we're going to do. I was going to ready to say, you know. <laughs> I don't know. We're going we're gonna to go do something tomorrow night. I'm in Houston. I'm sure it's a good, it'll be a good time with Gigi. Um, he... Uh, uh, we'll get you hooked up and uh, give you a proper H Town send up. Oh, we we were joking with Gigi that we would we could do a live <laughs> broadcast from the House of Pies together with him. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, everyone. I'm like, you know, I didn't it's explain. Hot. Well, that and you know, um, I hate to get all um, medical on myself right now, but uh, you know, I went to the doctor Friday, and they found a pallet in my sinus cavity and uh, they think it's been causing the headaches I've been having this migraine headaches so at some point I need to go to the doctor for my sinuses and get that taken care of of course uh, Serlan and I went to Walmart and that um, never helps. yeah I know um, and uh, I bought some Zan can't what is it? I can't even get some Zycam no spray. That's the one I was tripping balls with. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't have that effect on you. Yeah, oh, see, <laughs> it takes a, I mean, just a little bit. I, that's that night I had that crazy Ozzy Osbourne <laughs> dream is when I took the Zycam. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, K28 is asking us, what is House of Pies? Well, oh, geez, that's another thing for him to get obsessed it's about. It's basically a diner, and then they also make pies there. It's like what we used to call a greasy spoon. It's like an yeah. old-fashioned American diner. But they have a bakery there. Isn't it 24? 24-7. Seven. Yes, all the drunks go there yeah. late at night. And it, well, <laughs> Let's eat the place pie. is hopping, but Every kind you of usually pie have to you wait. think of. Apple pie, Dutch pie, I mean, Brent just silk pie, it, it's chocolate just pie. every pie. And they have cookies and other things, pecan pies. But <laughs> the inside of it looks like a 1970s <laughs> brothel from Vegas. That's kind of what it looks like, you know. Yeah, they haven't updated the decor. Yeah, and that's what I like about it. <laughs> but anyway, it's a good eating place, and, um, you know, at some Them's point we'll get over eatings. there. Yeah. Um, da, 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 da. So. Um, where are we at, Serlana? Uh, you've been mm-hmm. awfully quiet tonight. Yes, that's why I said this is a great show. I haven't had to say a word. I mean what I say, Gene. So take that to the bank and cash it. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, I'm just reading Space Minute. Oh, well, uh, you need okay. me to bring up content? Well, no, I'm, I'm a little choking over here. I could use my sidekick to, uh, oh. you, know, you know, I've asked John questions. You know... Put your spin on it and and ask him a few things. You want me to ask John questions? Sure. You you've always have interesting questions. Well, I wasn't prepped for that. I figured y'all would just talk. Just, okay, just ask him like he's your friend. Um, no, we said. had a <laughs> we had a turtle visit us this morning outside. Is that a good sign? Um, you know, it's funny you say <laughs> that. There's spirits. You know, animals have spirits too. You know, we're not the only ones. You know, we're not the only sentient beings, you know, trapped in this meat suit. Animals in many ways are more intelligent than us. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, cats and dogs communicate telepathically. I just read that today that they're starting to think that cats and dogs can see spirit, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, my old roommate, um, we were both DJs back in the day, and he had this chihuahua. Chihuahua Mm -hmm. named Spoon. (laughs) And this dog would just, you know, go to a certain corner of the house and start barking for no reason. And my buddy at first didn't get it. And that's that helped him to see the spirits. Hmm. He follow so, the dog. He would watch he, the dog. And then and then what I try to explain to people is that you're not necessarily no, 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 not necessarily gonna see a human being with a head, mm-hmm. a shoulders, hair, and a bust. You're looking for orbs of light or bent light or even geometric figures or a bending of light, kind of like on the movie Predator, okay. where they where their camouflage mm-hmm. is the surrounding environment, but the light will be bent. Um, it, it helps if the lights are dim. 
if the white, if the, the uh, I'm starting to mess up <laughs> speaking, but if the lights are bright, it washes out the room. Mm-hmm. But if they're dim, it's easier to see them. Mm-hmm. And one thing to do is to look at a nondescript point. It's hard to do it in this room with all the stars and right. stuff. But to look at a nondescript point on your wall or ceiling and allow yourself to be pulled to that point wherever it is. You know, may, maybe at first just look for a point and then allow yourself to be pulled to a point and then just start to stare at it and start to stare at it and start to stare at it. And that's often how you can traverse into these extra dimensional realms that sit right on top of us. And we just don't even know that they're there. Because I have a cat. I was like, I swear the, that cat is looking into a portal or something because it's just an empty hallway. There's no insects. There's nothing there. But there's something that has got their attention and you can't see it. And it's just like, why would they be so intent on nothing? There's got to be something they're seeing that we're not. And I, I'll catch Muffin do that very occasionally. I'm like, are you working with portals, Muffin? What's going on? <laughs> Or, or it could be something sentient. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it could per very well perhaps have a consciousness. It could be a portal or a vortex. You have to show it to me. I want to go look at it. Not mm-hmm. necessarily right now. but um, Well, I was going to say that... She likes know, to go when, into that hallway and just scream her head off. You know, when you were talking about <laughs> the dimensional aspect of this, you know, it's kind of like us with a uh, compared to a two-dimensional object. You know, from their perspective, they're just going to see... The, the line or, you know, you know. It's like that book, Flatland. Yeah, yeah like, Flatland. Yeah. You know, for example, there's something right next to your astronaut, of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, but <laughs> there's something next to your astronaut. And this is where, this is where I'm, I'm learning to get better about it, to identify what you have found. Mm-hmm. Okay, finding it for me is easy, but identifying it, giving it an identity. First, I try and figure out, is it male or female? And then is it making fun of that mustache? And then also, yeah, and it is. <laughs> but also, uh, is it family or not? Mm-hmm. That would be cool if it was. Though. And then here's something else, is once you start to see them, you got to figure out which ones belong to you and which ones are something else. Because when you first start to see them, Often you're seeing spirits that are part of your soul circle. Hmm. So I have similar, you know, angels in my soul circle that my mom has in her whole in her soul circle. There's Why? A lot of departed. There's a family connection. Right. There's a lot of departed on my mom's side. There's a lot gone. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, like I don't think my father's parents would be here because I was like, you know, but on my mom's side, there's a lot gone. But then again, you know, she, including her, since she didn't really experience her, her, her father's parents, um, it's not to say that they might not be here because of what you're seeing that soul. Well, circle. I hope they've learned some lessons. Let's put it that way. But, you know, also, if, if you start to really think about them, mm-hmm. you bring a part of them to you in the room with you. You know, whether you had a good relationship with them or not, or however it might have played out, um, by thinking of them, you're connecting to their energy. I dream about my mom like every other night. You know, part of that is is her coming to you when you're in the astral plane. When you're in the astral plane, you're, I dreamed, you're, I dreamed you're, about you're, her last night. You're it was, in the domain. It was pretty hilarious. Really? Actually. Yeah. <laughs> I've been having dreams about my ex-girlfriend. It's like, oh, God. And nothing intimate, just just us being friends and talking, and that's that's the hardest part of this whole thing is leaving somebody that you love, to, you know, try and do something completely different with your life. That's that has been harder than all of the moving, you know, all the backbreaking work to move everything out of my house, all, all the stress involved. That was the hardest part, and she stayed with me to the very last minute. And I gave her the option, you know, a month and a half ago. I didn't want to lie to her in any way. You know, I'm like, I am leaving. I don't want to, you know, get close to you and be intimate with you and then just pull it on you one day. I'm leaving. I couldn't do that to her and I couldn't do it to myself Mm. either. So I told her, you know, I'm like, the the ball's in your court. You have the option. What do you want to do? And she said, I want to stay with you until you leave. And she did. And was that a mistake? Probably. (laughs) <laughs> but you know what? I would make that mistake again. So, uh, putting the spin on what you just said, I mean, are there time? How are there are there times where 
uh, we feel like we can, how, is there a way that we can leave certain angels behind? Are they just, are we just connected in a way that we're in, inseparable? Um, certain ones will latch on to you for a lifetime, even if you forget about them. Mm-hmm. Like I, you just brought up a bunch of examples I don't want to think about in my past love life. But <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. I'm sorry, man. No, no, but it's a good question. <laughs> it's a good question. You, you, you know, you don't hold on to the same souls in your soul circle forever. Otherwise, you would go through. Uh, and it's interesting. Duke University has a program where they study reincarnation. Hmm. Duke University. Wow. They're coming out and talking about it now. That seems like it'd be unheard of. And it's not yeah. widely accepted, period, by academia in the university system. It's not. Um, a lot of universities, uh, these PhDs that would study this phenomenon, would lose their funding. Right. They would lose their funding. The, the state might even yank their funding. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Especially yeah. your state university, you got this PhD spouting mm-hmm. off about reincarnation. They yank your funding. Uh, but apparently Duke University is in a happy place with it and ha- has a number of PhDs, you know, teaching students about it. <laughs> How cool is that? I think that's a, a huge breakthrough and something that requires more attention. Oh, yeah. And, most... and, and discussion also. And, and that leads back to that, uh, what I was talking earlier about scientists wanting to uh, squash uh, opening, mm-hmm. uh, you know, your mind to new possibilities. Um, which I've of, often felt frustrated, you know, reading history in general, uh, when you see people that were ahead of their times, like Tesla, um, who, you know, if, if if Tesla indeed had the ability and the chance and people let him, um, we would probably be living in a different kind of uh, electrical revolution, if you will, evolution, or revolution for that matter. Um, so um, it's, it's, it's promising to see that universities are opening up to things like reincarnation and, and other enlightenment of items like that. So it's very cool. Well, and a lot of PhDs and a lot of major universities study all this esoteric knowledge, but they just can't come out and really talk about it. You know, mm-hmm. you figure they're doing their own research while they're doing the BS research that is more palatable for the scientific community and in the back of their mind they're creating their own you know their own book report on all this esoteric information and often what is happening anymore is when these PhDs retire when they finally retire mm-hmm. and they are, are you know no longer worried about getting their pensions then they're often saying things like that on their deathbed hmm. well it's very interesting mm-hmm. um, so well John we're at the top of the hour um, I guess at this point, you know, if you still want to just hang there and, I'll, I'll and just... Go. I'll go. I'll, uh, I'll kick back and listen to you and her if you if y'all have <laughs> some things y'all want to talk about. Well, the phone lines are open, so if people want to call in, um, you know, it is open. And so let's take our break, and when we come back, uh, we'll talk uh, banter talk like we usually do, and we'll sure. take calls, and uh, and if John just says a word or two in, he, he's, he's, he's got his open mic open there. So don't go anywhere.
You so, know, as always in the universe, uh, we talk about stuff off air, and it's always frustrating because we try to have a no off air conversation about the stuff that we should have on air. But um, <laughs> well, it's really hard when they're in, they're in the same room. Yeah, you know. So um, what are you gonna do? Not talk to them? But no, it's just you know, fascinating stuff. I, I I think we'll save it for another time, and. Uh, uh, because it's it's information I, I'd like to look into more, mm -hmm. and you know John's you know giving his interpretation of the subject matter, and um, you know I would like to be more uh, up on it before you, you know get more in depth. Yeah, in, in fact, I want to hear more you know what John was saying. So I'm sorry, yeah. audience, you'll just have to deal with the fact that we had an interesting conversation <laughs> during the break. So, um, Sir Lana. Mm -hmm. Um, so, what do you have on the docket? Frivolous stuff. Yeah, so let's go down to frivolous stuff. Well, you've heard the latest brouhaha. There's a couple of Netflix topics here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, Disney wants to make their own streaming thing. So, Netflix is trying to negotiate with Disney to keep the rights mm -hmm. to Marvel and Star Wars right. movies. They're basically taking all the, like, Disney, you know, like... Uh, Everything from, you know, like Pixar movies to animated stuff. And Disney wants to get into the act of creating their own streaming service, which, you know, would be a pretty extensive catalog if they had their own thing. Yeah, and uh, they'll, they want to, they are, they're thinking about even launching Toy Story 4 and a Frozen sequel on that service. Hmm. The thing is that uh, what I've come to this conclusion is kind of like we finally get a la carte, right? Uh, Serlani, you know how much I wanted to leave. We've been wanting that cable, for 30 years. Cable. Uh, mm -hmm. Get rid of the cable um, TV aspect and go strictly with digital service. Which, which we did. Uh, which soon we did. as Breaking Bad ended, we did and, that. And that, yeah, Breaking Bad marks the beginning of our uh, quest for uh, a la carte. And we've got it through Amazon and then Netflix, you know, and then Hulu. Uh, we don't do Hulu that much, but we're mostly Amazon. Amazon and Netflix. Now, <clears throat> the reality is that uh, you know you have now that they've seen how successful Netflix is. When I say they, I'm referring to like things like CBS and uh, all these other channels. And uh, I've come to the conclusion <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> and that's John Polk with the soothing sounds of bedtime. <laughs> Um. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big first official yawn. I freaked up all the air in the room. So basically, I've told you, Solana, that mm -hmm. uh, um, I'm not buying CBS All Access. Oh, so you're, not, you're not getting one more streaming service. Yeah. Well, certainly, we wouldn't benefit that much from Disney. I mean, well, you know, and I think people were worried in the sense of, you know, if Disney's going to take their stuff off of uh, Take their toys and yeah, go Netflix, they don't have to worry necessarily worry about all Marvel stuff because um, the uh, the uh, mm. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> hold on just a second here. All right, I'm gonna pipe you down. You know what? I'm, I'm going to bed. Okay, I'm, I'm going Get, to bed. Going to bed. <laughs> Good night, John I, I Boy. Try, I tried. <laughs> I'm, I'm being uh, rude now. Hey, hey. Good night, everybody. Good night, John. Good night, John, <laughs> right. Good night, John Boy. Good. Uh, he's had a long day, so he, he deserves to, to get some sleep. Because tomorrow he's dealing with Gigi, and, you know, he needs all the rest he can get. <laughs> he's cracking up over here. So I guess long story short is that uh, I'm not buying a new... Oh, I was talking about the, the Marvel stuff that's being mm -hmm. produced on Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think The that's, original content? The original content. That won't go anywhere because that's not Disney t per se. That's... Uh, content that Netflix has purchased and bought to create, and even though uh, Marvel has ran out of Disney, um, that shouldn't go anywhere. So, uh, um, but yeah, I don't think I want to buy another service. No. Um, and you know, I, uh, I just, I just don't feel like, you know, I have to go. See, it's different. Like when I purchased Showtime for Amazon. We had to do that to watch that Zero Days yeah, which documentary, was, which was fascinating, really fascinating and scary. Yeah. And so, um, at least with that, is it's still packaged in one area. Yeah, and I you go can to get one, rid of it if you I, want to. I go to one area to see what I want to see, whereas I shouldn't have to, like, uh, have to pay for uh, CBS, Netflix. Hulu. And Hulu. And, you know, I'm Amazon. already paying, you know, what I'm paying for, so... Uh, it is what it is, and, and that's all it is. And well, further bad news for Netflix, if you're in Canada, 
you're going to get a price hike for Netflix. You're going to go from eight ninety nine to ten ninety nine, which we've already done here in America. Mm-hmm. So uh, we did that in May of last year here, and of course they had a big boost in their profit when they did that. So Canada, you're next. Sorry, uh, about, sorry, sorry about it. That's not wasn't very good. Oh come on! <laughs> anyway, I know that the Canadians uh, are. It gets their goat too. So you know. <laughs> that I don't was, know. We've got two Canadians in the chat. We'll see if their goat has oh, got t- two goats. <laughs> Okay, so that's two goats. Do we want to explain the Kim Cattrall thing? Um, okay, well, first off, you know, when you're married to somebody, uh, sometimes they like to point out how stupid you can be. I did not point out that you're stupid. It's just that you were stubbornly refusing. <laughs> I, I, you know, okay, I did not realize that Kim Cattrall was in that movie, uh, Police Academy. What it was is... Um, Somehow Kim Cattrall came up, or, or or Police Academy came up, something, and I said, um, "Oh yeah, Kim Cattrall was in that movie." Uh, I forget if we were talking about Mannequin or what. And she, he said, "Kim Cattrall's not in Police Academy." I said, "Yeah, the first Police Academy." She's like, "She she went in a movie, never happened." I'm like, "I'm pretty sure I saw that movie like 800 times on HBO back in the day." Um, so I let it go. I'm like, it doesn't matter if she was in the movie or not. I mean, life goes on. <laughs> Our life will go on. I like how she You'll goes. You'll continue to have the dental pain and headaches, and I'll have my dental issues. So I waited for a week and a half to go by, and then I actually looked it up on internetmoviedatabase.com, and I just said, you know, out of the blue, I said, you know, I'm not trying to start something here, <laughs> but just in case you end up in a life or death situation where you have to know the cast of the original Police Academy movie, sent him the link. Kim Control was in Police Academy. Okay, and so to my defense is the reason why I didn't remember her being in that, that movie was that she's a brunette in that movie. And, you know, most of the time that I've seen Kim Control, other than when she played in Star Trek, um, she's usually a blonde. Well, well, yeah, Star Trek, she was wearing a wig. Yeah, she's wearing a wig with uh, the ears and she stuff. She was too but, emotional for a Vulcan. Uh, yeah, well, she was part, wasn't she part Romulan? Or? Oh, I don't remember. I think there was a Romulan angle there. And um, Romulans are very snidey. But anyway, so yes, you're right, Serlana. Kim Cattrall was in Police Academy. And I goofed. I had a moment lapse. And, I thought you know, it was funny. Um, you know, so in the immortal words of Steve Martin, excuse me. Whatever. I feel vindicated. Whatever. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about another corporate <laughs> entity <laughs> that's doing some things. Um, our beloved Amazon is saying they may take on Ticketmaster when it comes to purchasing concert and sports tickets. So right now, Amazon, you can use Amazon to purchase things other than Amazon goods and services. Mm -hmm. I bought our tickets to Rift Tracks Live next week through Amazon's pay service. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can do PayPal. Um, So... That it, you know, it processed through our um, the card that I have on file with Amazon already, and it bought the you know, tickets and it sent me the QR code and the you know receipt. So just like it does when I do it the other way, so I guess they're going to use that. Maybe they're going to use that same idea for tickets. They're going to start selling tickets the same way they that you could pay for other things outside of Amazon. But uh, they they have this overseas already operates tickets ticket buying, but they haven't launched that here. See, Ticketmaster is owned by Live Nation, mm-hmm. which has a grip on the box office and lo- the largest, most popular venues, artists, um, events. So it's they're not necessarily a monopoly, but they're they're pretty close to it because they'd have. All the famous things, like everything you and I have gone to see here in Houston Mm -hmm. has been through Live Nation, pretty much. Live Nation. Comedians, bands. Trying to think who else we might have seen. Uh, We um, we saw Mythbusters live. Let me get that through there. We might have. um, Yeah. So, 
you know, and, and Amazon already has a positive uh, opinion of most for most people. So, well, you know, it's like uh, uh, I prefer shopping on Amazon. It's really gotten to a point. You know, when Walmart back in the day used to be cool to go to, easy to get things. You know, they made a, a name for themselves. Now you can just go on and see the terrible YouTube videos of people of Walmart, and you can see how bad Walmart has gotten. Why you want to go shop there? You know. Should uh, I s- uh, should I tell this story? <laughs> oh, I don't know what story. To, uh, well, if I leave, let's if I leave out names. Uh oh. If I leave out names, um. The names have been changed. Because you know, talking about Walmart, I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that. If you work at Walmart, like do you do the registers or you stock, if you're doing anything but being management, I guess they may maybe they don't pay you enough to care. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, yeah, I see how you're going to change the name. Maybe uh, they don't pay enough to I care just... about what happens in the store, especially at nine o'clock on a weeknight when maybe there's not that many people in there. Okay, mm-hmm. so <laughs> I know somebody that has a teenage son. And, you know, school's not, <clears throat> school hasn't started up yet here in the U.S. since in this part of the country. But it's about to, it's about to start in like a week or two. So this kid was over at a friend's house spending the night, you know, away from home. So they had preseason football practice. They got to start getting in shape before school starts, you know. Mm-hmm. So they had gone to practice that day. And they were real tired and they were hurting because they hadn't been working out, you know, during the summer. So they go to Walmart. I'm going to say these kids are 14 and 15. (laughs) And they get in, each one of them gets in one of the um, motorized shopping carts. You know, you sit down and drive yourself around because they were hurting, so they said. And they drove around, and they drove to the toy aisle, and they put on these latex animal masks, and they found some Nerf lightsabers, and they jousted with each other on the motorized (laughs) shopping cart things. And the few people that were in there, like kids, they, they had these kids came out of nowhere and started watching them and cheering them on. And there were a few employees there who who didn't, seem to care you know what they're doing Mm -hmm. and one other customer was in there it was some lady and she was going to find a manager and complain and so the other employees told her says that woman's going to find a manager you might want to get to another part of the store (laughs) and um so this kid came home and told the mom and he says i just had the best time at walmart the other night and she told me about it, and she was laughing, and she's like, could you manage, please, not to get arrested <laughs> <laughs> one night? So that's pretty much the kind of things you can do in Walmart these days, just to give you an idea. If you maybe you don't live in a country that's got a Walmart, you're listening, mm-hmm. and you don't know what that experience is like. It's like there is a line between walmart and target targets like the more upscale versions like you know hipsters go there and things are a little bit more expensive there's less Drama. i think there's there's less product in that store than your typical walmart because usually walmart are super stores um like the target in the mall i don't think it's a super target it's just a target target Tar- a target target and uh you know back home when we first got our target we would call it target to be fancy mm-hmm. um but we didn't get that till mid 90 i mean mid 2000s cuz we're that far behind but uh yeah it's um it's an experience we went to a walmart today that wasn't our usual walmart i was like can we oh god oh we could just shop in this walmart cuz it was it was better than ours it was a little higher class well, I mean, it, uh, you know, getting back to what I was saying earlier is that um, I do all my shopping when I can on um, Amazon. Um, it's very convenient. I just open up my phone. I have the app on there or uh, when I'm, you know, at my desk and I, I'm going through some items. I generally 
don't buy a lot of things that I normally do on Amazon at Walmart because uh, I try to avoid Walmart at all costs. And our Walmart is was one of the like the original Walmarts that they came out in the uh, I guess late 80s, early 90s, the small ones, and then they converted it over to a bigger Walmart, which it still feels small compared to the super Walmarts that are around in the neighborhood. Um, but the end of the day is just that uh, I try to avoid uh, Walmart and um, uh, because, um, you know, uh, you saw the, the craziness that was going on with the school supplies. Oh, my gosh. We got too close to the school supplies and got sucked into locked into. Yeah. The battling, trapped in there. We couldn't get out. Battling baskets. You know, I'm, I'm not moving. And, you know, <laughs> um, you know, you need to turn around and uh, and go back the other way. So, um, yeah, end of the day, I do the Amazon thing. It's safe and convenient from my own home, and I can even do it in my underwear. So, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. I'm not. You know what? I'm not going to get into that because I think I want to do a show on that topic, so I'm not going to mention it. What, my underwear? Uh, no. God, no. <laughs> um, so, my f- friend has a theory that people are going bat crap crazy just in general because the solar eclipse is coming. Mm hmm. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Good um, so I started to look it up. Uh, I didn't realize what a big deal this solar eclipse is going to be. That reminds me of other things, too, related to this solar eclipse, but continue. But uh, it has been 99 years since there's been a full solar eclipse that passed over North America so perfectly. So it's it's going to be unique. So um, the sun is roughly 400 times the size of the moon. And you're thinking, well, how can it cover it up so completely? But, you know, it's it's just how... It, it, it's like the sometimes the sun is totally covered and sometimes it's partially covered but um i think if you're going to be in in this certain path you're going to see the full coverage of the moon and what i didn't realize about this when it fully covers the moon you have blocked out our main light source this means that birds will stop chirping because they think it's nighttime. You're going to be able to see the planets better. You're going to be able to see um, our stars better. It's a rare and unique opportunity. I almost hate that. You know, I'm going to be at work at 1.30 p.m. in mm-hmm. the afternoon. So You know, I didn't even think about uh, being able to see the night sky. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that must be, you know, because it'll be seen from a perspective that we don't get to see because yeah. of, of uh, the eclipse. It's going to start west coast of Oregon and go to the east coast of South Carolina the first time in 99 years. Uh, there's going to be like a band of totality, and it's uh, there's a nice handy map I'm looking at. I think, I don't know if I tweeted this or not. I'll tweet it now. Mm-hmm. I think I tweeted it earlier, but I'll just tweet it again. Tweet it again. Um the shape of the moon's shadow won't be completely smooth because this, the moon isn't symmetrical. It's got craters and bumps and alien, uh, you know, structures and old bits of um, broken NASA things. And then, you know, that guy, Bob, who's Bob the alien, is the administrator of the moon. He's <laughs> up there, too. So um, even if you're not in the path of the total, where you'll get to see the total coverage, if you're anywhere in the 48 states... You'll get to see something. But if you're in Hawaii or Alaska, you're only going to see a very tiny bit. So um, the link that I tweeted out has a link on the page to a map. You put in your zip code and it'll tell you how much you're going to see. So that's pretty neat. We're going to see in Texas, not a full, but um, a significant coverage of the moon. But it won't be a full coverage of the moon. And... uh, I think it's just going to be really neat. I wish I could see it. But, again, don't look at the thing unless you've got some special glasses or a special way. Please go check out the safest way to look at the moon. Uh, don't go running out looking at it, you know. Which reminds me of how crazy people have been lately. Um, what was it today? Um when we were off to do 
errands and stuff like Yesterday that. Yesterday and today, yeah, people have been trying to kill us with their car. Um, so, yeah, some crazy drive. I mean, and then there was one that honked at us when we were turning into uh, Jack in the Box. And um, the, clearly I had the blinker on. I was slowing down. And this guy comes up from behind me and honks at me just because I'm making a left-hand turn into the Jack in the Box. I mean, just just, just weird, uh, uh, crazy uh, cats and dogs living together uh, in hysteria kind of moments. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let's move on. Hey, hey I did wanted, you hear this? I wanted to congratulate Dead Mouse for getting married. Oh. Uh, apparently, uh, you know, he is getting married, and I can't think of the, uh, the young lady, but the young lady looks. I smoking. wonder what kind of hat she's going to wear. And uh, good night, John. <laughs> um, the thing is that uh, she looks smoking, and then, of course, I guess Dead Mouse has been under that uh, helmet too long because he looks whiter than a sheet. Yeah. And, um, you know, he looks ghostly. Okay. I've never seen him without his mouse head, so. Well, it's plus, out there. Plus, I don't care. So. <laughs> what? It's music related. I like Oh, it mouse. is music related. I, mean, I like his music. I, I just don't really say, care about I, him. I, the thing is that, you know. Uh, I have some of his stuff on what my playlist. Is, what has he said that, that it just totally alienates you? I'm not alienated. I just don't care about his personal okay, life. Okay. So, what were you going to say before I interrupted you? Did you know that scientists in Scotland have named an ancient crocodile after Lemmy from Motorhead. Well, now I do. Uh, Lemmy Suchus obtusensidens. Say that three times fast. Which lived 164 million years ago, and it was 19 feet long, and it lived in the middle Jurassic period. Hmm, Jurassic. Uh, what a wonderful time um, in uh, history. Um, so... Uh, you know, Alexa is spying on us, or is it? Well, we don't have one, so how can she do that? Well, the thing is that I'm just saying there are people that are buying these things, and supposedly Alexa is listening. And uh, Well, she's supposed to because you talk to her, right? Well, that is true. I mean, What else is she you, supposed to you do? Know, Read your thoughts? As a kid, I always thought, or even when we watched Star Trek, uh, The Next Generation, I always thought it was great to one day have a computer, computer you could talk to computer. a computer. But now it's like I'm worried talking to a computer because whatever I say can and used will be used against you in court of law. And so now I don't want to have the kind of device, which, you know, our TV. Yeah, well, I don't really know why. Our TV has the ability to talk to. But, but even if we don't hook it up to the net? No, it's not. Well, it, we don't have it hooked up for that simple reason. We um, don't need it anyway for that. No, but it, it does have the apps, and you know that the Roku is uh, on its last leg, and we need to replace it. Yeah, it's the Roku's many, many, many years old, and you broke one of us broke the remote, sort of, so it doesn't function like it should. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, hey, I did not know that there was going to be a re-release of Terminator Two. Mm -hmm. Nobody told me this, and it's going to be in three D. And if it works out, you were telling me that... Oh, yeah. And the crazy thing is, if, if it does well in the box office, James Cameron says he will re-release Aliens, that's the second Alien mm. movie, in 3D. That would actually work. Can you imagine yeah. uh, oh, uh, Ripley in that, that, uh, with that mech suit coming at you like this? That just takes... Just what you just said takes me back to when I was a teenager and skipped school to go see this in the theater. <laughs> uh, um, I've so I think I've told this story before how I skipped school and now I'm uh, yawning because we got up at eight o'clock <laughs> and uh, went in there and watched Alien by my Aliens by myself and it was in uh, THX Dolby Sound and it was kind of new at the time and you know you felt like the aliens were all around you and that was pretty exciting stuff That's, then yeah I can't now imagine. the pro the prospect of seeing aliens in 3D. Now, if you know, I trust James Cameron to pull it off because the man has the Midas touch, if you will. Um, the man has is already Oops, committed to doing I what I two something. or three more Avatar movies. I never seen the first one. But anyway, and we all know that the T two is probably <laughs> the best out of all Terminator movies. I don't know. Um, I'm really fond of the first one. Uh, well, it's okay. I mean, but the second one, T2, 
uh, is just it's well put together. It had a good budget, and you know James Cameron was behind it. And so um, what has happened is that uh, I you know speaking of Terminator Two or Terminator no no um, ah, noise Terminator news is that uh, the rights will eventually fall back to James Cameron. And from what I've heard is that he's going to make a rebooted uh, trilogy. And, um, and if he's at the helm of this, I'm sure it'll be a blockbuster again. Yeah, but I'm, I'm curious, how do they go back and you take a movie that's already done, already filmed, and make it into 3D? I'm, I'd be curious how they do that process. Um, I guess they take certain elements and, and you know, make it 3D watchable. And, uh, you know, they change it up. Uh, I mean, there's techniques that they've, uh, I've seen a couple other movies that they attempted and it, it looks decent. Uh, it's kind of like um, uh, the the bad one was uh, when we saw, um, what was it, uh, Resident Evil. Yeah, there was something we saw. I was like, no, I can't, I can't, you know. Yeah, the Resident Evil movie wasn't totally done in 3D and, and, and it was like this, you know, push for 3D movies. And mm -hmm. so they went back and they put elements a certain segment of the movie yeah. in 3d why why is it when 3d first came out the, you know the good 3d mm. the more recent 3d it seems like you go see 3d and like the first 20 minutes were like oh this is really good and it's like then it just sort of there's no more 3d it's like it drops out it's like oh well that, we can't that's be bothered. exactly how that was in that movie but um I, you know i think that the um, you know, it'll be good. I mean, and, and here's the thing is that uh, you probably have the masters of the T2 movie. And then there are certain, you know, how you layer certain things. Like, for example, when you have the liquid metal, metal Terminator, mm -hmm. um, that would probably be 3D. I mean, I could see certain aspects of the movie being turned into 3D. And it's just a matter of going back over the special effects uh, with the, the Terminator, uh, liquid metal Terminator, and making that 3D. And then explosions, you know, you can, uh, it's just different techniques. We'll probably have to watch a YouTube video on it so you can be reassured that James Cameron is doing the right thing. Well, that'll be interesting. I would, I would definitely watch both of those movies in 3D because I know you'd be interested. It's not, I will be there with my free food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, uh, Catalina is talking about Finding Nemo, only part of the movie was uh, done in 3D, and, and that sucks. I mean, I'm going to pay for a movie to see it in 3D. I want to see the whole dang movie in 3D. I don't want to have to put on my glasses halfway through or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of reminds me of when they did Freddy uh, Krueger. Uh, they did that in 3D, uh, but it was only for a small segment of the movie that was 3D and not the whole movie. I, I feel cheated out of when they, they do something like if that. They're, if they're not going to do it all the way through and it's going to be good, don't bother. Just leave it alone. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, you know, uh, speaking of AI, um, you know, our friend, the billionaire uh, Tesla owner, um, uh, Mr. Alien himself, uh, going to want to move to Mars. Yeah. Uh, he says that uh, basically um, that AI is a greater threat than North Korea right now. Hard to believe. Well, I could see where he's coming from because an uncontrolled, uh, unchecked AI um, could, you know, it just buys into the Skynet theory of, of uh, artificial intelligence controlling the population. Really? <clears throat> well, yes. do you think he knows something we don't know? Um, that he's going to Mars? I'm sure. I'm fine with him going to Mars. He can stay there. I'm sure there's a lot of things he probably knows that uh he doesn't say but you know what can you do just well, drive his cars and hopefully get the chance to ride the hyperloop i wouldn't mind if we got the hyperloop here and for the triangle and you know we say triangle houston dallas austin back to houston that's the, the triangle can you imagine just zipping up to dallas and only staying in dallas as long as you absolutely have to and then coming right back well, just the idea of going to either Dallas or Houston or, I mean, Dallas or San Antonio or uh, Austin, for that matter, you know, the Triangle. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see, um, you know, because uh, I guess a road trip to San Antonio is about a little over two hours 
Well, Unless I'm, you're driving. Well, it's a little bit under two hours. But can you imagine getting to San Antonio within an hour? I mean, that's crazy. Might be less with that thing. I mean, and that opens up the possibilities of I live in Houston, I work in San Antonio, and I'm going to go spend the evening in Dallas to, mm-hmm. to live it up, do the live whatever, mm-hmm. nightlife. That breaks up a new possibility of peak commuters, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll probably be dead by then. So, anyway. Hey, I'm going to read this to you because I don't understand it. Maybe you can make heads or tails of it. Scientists successfully infiltrate computer using malware coded into DNA. Uh, Now, researchers at the University of Washington have successfully infected a computer with malware coded into a strand of DNA. They wanted to see if a computer could be compromised in that way. Uh, included a known security del- vulnerability in a DNA processing program before creating a synthetic DNA strand that had malicious code embedded onto the DNA strand. So a computer would analyze this infected DNA strand, and as a result of the malware in the DNA, the researchers were able to remotely exploit the computer. Uh, and they were published the results in you know this academic paper, and they wanted to be able to understand what new computer security risks are possible in the interaction between biomolecular information and the computer systems that analyze it. So does this mean you could get some kind of implant or somebody could have an infected strand of DNA to infect a computer or, I don't know, what do you think they're saying there? Um, that, that, uh, that there's a possibility that the mechanical and the biological could, uh, uh, infect each other. Yeah, that's crazy. It is. I mean, it, it just goes to the thing about when we've talked about putting computers in our brain, you know, uh, can, can you imagine catching something off the, the, the net, um, and infecting your brain, a, a virus, or... Yeah, they said last month scientists revealed they were able to insert a GIF, or GIF if you're a huge nerd, a GIF of a horse into the DNA of a living bacteria. So I guess it was just this little animated loop of a horse, I don't know what the horse is doing, on a DNA strand of living bacteria. <clears throat> just so we can get memes into bacteria, apparently. No, uh, so a new way of getting our cat photos from the internet, I guess. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, I didn't know there was going to be a Deadpool animated series coming. Uh, and isn't it uh, Donald Glover involved in that? Uh, well, um, it's going to be okay. They said the animation is going to be different from the movie in the tone and the voice. It's, uh, you know, of course, that the movie was R-rated. So Fox said um, they're, they're doing a sequel for the movie. It's going to have Cable and Domino in it. And it really kicked off the franchise. It showed that you can have a anti-hero and it, you can have a movie where the hero is funny and irreverent. And also, I also think that's kind of why Thor... Ragnarok is going to have more humor in it because they saw that humor can sell too. So, as you said, back in May, Fox or FX said that it would be teaming up with Donald and Stephen Glover, uh, maybe that's Donald's brother, to bring a Deadpool animated series to life. But, um, of course, Marvel has a number of these animated series on Disney XD. I guess that's one of another mm-hmm. channels. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they got a new Spider-Man that's coming, but Deadpool will be more mature and adult-focused. And it's going to be, I guess, maybe on FX channel. Okay. And Makes sense. There's no word on, I think, the other people that are going to be in it. But, uh, yeah, he's uh, Donald Glover is actually involved in it, so that ought to be interesting. Um Yeah, so it's FX. That doesn't mean you'll have to get a... I don't know how we would watch it, though. It would just be Amazon, you know? Or Yeah, the Amazon thing. I mean, I'm sure they would put it... I mean... Well, you know, he's got a successful 
I guess it's a drama show called Atlanta, Donald Glover. Mm-hmm. And I guess because that's such a success, they're letting him get involved in another project. Well, plus, he's the uh, the playing the younger uh, Lando Calrissian on yeah. the Han Solo movies. Han Solo. So he's getting around. I love, yeah, I love Deadpool as well. I I never cared much about, you know, I enjoyed Guardians of the Galaxy and I enjoyed the one we just had, but I was like, oh, that's cool. But Deadpool, I don't know, I must have seen that seven times since since we saw it and then you bought it and I can watch it over and over again. Indeed. Um, I enjoyed it too. Um, uh, you, you tend to gravitate some to some movies like that it's um a- now wonder woman i really did like it mm-hmm. they handled it very well um it was great for a a, a female focused superhero movie oh let's talk about sour grapes man okay speaking of movies i don't have that article up but Okay, you know, I, it's well documented my secret guilty love for the movie The Fifth Element, which was directed by Luke B E S S O N. I've never, never known how to say his last name, Besson, or do you say it French like Besson? It's Besson. Besson. Luc Besson. Um, well, you know, he came out with Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets, which I still would like to see. It looks uh, cinematic. Critics nice. have panned it. It's not done well here in America. It's only made $89 million, and it would cost over, well over $100 million to make. So, out of the blue, Luke says, I don't like superhero movies, and the whole point of the Captain America movie was just to promote American propaganda. Like, what other country in the world says they're... Captain so and so, there's no Captain France, no Captain Brazil. He's like, you know, the utter nerve of America to say they're the greatest and they're the best and have this whole superhero named after the. I'm like, apparently Luke doesn't know that Captain America has existed for decades in the comic book world. Mm-hmm. What were they supposed to call him? You know, change his name from Captain America to something else? I mean, Captain America goes back to even, you know, with him fighting Hitler. I mean, uh, it's a famous uh, uh, comic where he ends up hitting Hitler in the face or something to that effect. I think Superman did that, too, or something. But, uh, yeah, it just sounds like sour grapes because his movie's not doing well and he's coming down on superhero movies because they're really hot right now. They're making a crap ton of money right now in this country Mm -hmm. we've got we've had the guardians we just had wonder woman we've got spider-man homecoming thor's coming in november and i mean that's going to make a ton because of the awesome trailers they've been putting out uh i don't know if there's something else coming before the end of the year as far as superhero i think that's that's probably about it yeah next year uh, next year it uh, is going to be phenomenal too so Mm -hmm. I mean, just there's really they're getting to that point with the the crop of superheroes that we've grown to love over, I guess, the past several years. And, you know, there's rumored that uh, there's going to be somebody that gets killed off. That's pretty well known. Speaking of which, it might be um, Captain America, of all people. Um, And so, you know. And, you know, they're going to bring some new people in. You know, you're going to get more mm-hmm. movies like uh, Ant-Man. And, um, and Paul the, Rudd's good as yeah. funny as Ant-Man. He's, so. he's almost Deadpool-esque, but he's still, like, kind of like PG. But, uh, yeah. And, and then there's also, uh, you know... I don't care for Captain America, the movie version. Guardians sort of the of Galaxy. Yeah. Uh, you know, in that movie, you had, uh, you know, the original Guardians were, I guess, like, uh, you know, what was it? Sylvester Sloan was in it. So yeah, was, they showed briefly the characters from the original. Do you think that's them teasing that they may bring that into the next film? I think so because uh, there's been some rumored that uh, there might be a spinoff of Guardians and it will be uh, Sylv- Sylvester Stallone uh, bringing up this crew of people. So, And so we might see you know Guardians of the Galaxy crew go a different way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tell you, I love Rocket. 
the raccoon uh, played the by guy who does his voice, um, um, Bradley Cooper. Yeah, Bradley. I didn't. I know he's doing something with his voice, but I would not have suspected he could. Yeah, because you know make that register. When, I, when I'm watching that that movie with him in it or playing the raccoon, I'm listening for a, a definitely a, a Bradley Cooper a voice, and I don't hear it. I mean, it's just it's so not. It's him. very New York accent. Yeah. He's got rocket. And so, but he does a great job bringing that character to life. But, uh, yeah, that scene that was half practical effects, half CGI, where Rocket's, you know, booby trap in the forest to get the bad guys, you know, off their tail. Mm -hmm. And they're playing Southern Skies by oh, Glenn yeah. Campbell. I was like, that was very timely, you mm -hmm. know, and it, Glenn Campbell just recently passed. But uh, I... You know, every now and then I hear about an artist or a celebrity that's passed. I'm like, I thought they'd been dead for years. And I felt really <laughs> bad, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, that song was really good, too. It brought and back I did not expect, oh, gosh, every time I watch a Guardians movie, it's like flashback, flashback, flashback. Because of all the different music. Yeah, and uh, I did not expect this recent Guardians movie to be so weepy and sad you know so mm -hmm. gut-wrenching oh yeah it's and i when, told you i told you when uh I, I, it's not much to give away because the movie's been, been out. out if you haven't seen it by now it's your problem um <laughs> the fact that and then the, the comics have been out there forever but um the fact is that when peter defeats his father and he feels down by the fact that he's i guess killed his father uh, and Yondo, uh, is it Yondo? Uh, Yondu, yeah. Yondu is like trying to get him off the planet and, and escape. And uh, he tells him, hey, uh, he may have been your father, but... He wasn't your daddy. Uh, he wasn't your daddy. And I like, like how he <laughs> sounds like a southern redneck. Yeah. Uh, okay, but, that gra ra voice. Which is funny. He plays that, that same kind of... Well, uh, it's funny you should be talking about Yondu because... Um, the guy who plays him, Michael Rooker, mm -hmm. says here, Michael Rooker will commemorate Yondu at a special event for fans. Um, leader, He was the leader of Ravagers and Peter Quill's adoptive dad slash kidnapper. Uh, he was, has one of the most memorable death scenes to date in the MCU. And although some have questioned whether he did the character justice, but... If you've never read any of the comics, you don't know any better. So he described it as a big time of grief that lasts forever. So he's going to have something to kind of commemorate with fans so they can like, you know, mm -hmm. oh, you know, he's gone. So it's going to be in Los Angeles between um, 9 a.m. and noon on August 22nd at Shorty's Barbershop in West Hollywood. So the first 50 fans that get there will receive a $50 gift certificate to Shorty's Barbershop and come back and get the Yondu look, which I guess is a mohawk. Mm -hmm. Yondu uh, entails a faux hawk and red spray, hair sprayed red. Ten lucky stylish fans will have their hair cut and dyed on the day while Rooker is there to witness it. And uh, with a chance of being one of those tens, you need to email your name and mobile number to a Gmail in advance uh there will not be a lot of giveaways including um a blu-ray combo pack of guardians of galaxy 2 are people still getting dvds in this day and age um mm -hmm. posters signed by rooker and other guardians themed items will be there opportunities to take photos with him two fans will leave the barbershop with an awesome custom-made yondu umbrella to keep that dew safe from the sun you may never get another chance to attain a Yondu umbrella because it's hard to see them being stolen, sold in a Disney store. But uh, just meeting Rooker will be the most awesome thing, I think. So I'm going to tweet this link out for you to read about that. There you go. So I think that's cool. He he cared enough about his character to let mm -hmm. people celebrate it. I think it's nifty. And I like that whole thing, I'm oh, Mary Poppins, y'all. And we hadn't seen a movie when we went to Comic Palooza. We hadn't seen it yet. And I saw a woman dressed mm -hmm. as Yondu with the bald blue head, bald face. But she she had Yondu's jacket, but it looked more like... A mohawk. 
in a mohawk, but she had an umbrella. She was a Mary Poppins slash Yondu cosplay mashup. That was very cool. So she had elements of Mary Poppins, very obvious, and then Yondu. It was like I couldn't understand it because we hadn't seen the movie yet. Now, I would be remiss to not mention that um, um, Michael's character, um, he was uh, um, on The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. And so that was for UK, another K reference there. (laughs) Oh, I was trying to find this photo. Um, oh, uh, Ryan yeah. Reynolds is trolling Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, Deadpool doesn't ex- exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because I guess he's Fox. And Spider-Man is owned by Sony. But both of them are Marvel characters. Mm-hmm. But they're not really owned by Marvel right now. Yeah, because in, in the day... Marvel was, um, I guess you could say, hurting pretty bad for money. And so they uh, sold the rights to uh, certain studios to get some money. Uh, Now, in the ultimate long run of this, uh, now it's hurt them because um, we get things like a Fantastic Four movie that everybody hates. And the only reason we get that movie is because... Uh, Fox is making it so they can retain the rights to um, continue to use the property. And so that is why um, the state of the Marvel Universe is in disarray. Because you would have in the upcoming Avenger movies, uh, the uh, uh, Infinity War, Infinity War, um, you would have basically members of the X team, X X Men team, mm-hmm. in that movie. Yeah, see, that's the weird is um, all the Marvel properties are kind of split between big studios, Marvel being Disney, Fox, and Sony. Well, Sony just has Spooderman, as I call him. Mm-hmm. But well, what Ryan Reynolds was doing is he tweeted a picture of the Vancouver Police Department all group photo outside. And he says, thank you, VPD and the great people of Vancouver for putting up with road closures, traffic delays as we film Spider-Man downtown. (laughs) Well, he's talking about Deadpool. (laughs) He's blaming it on Spider-Man. So, uh, you know, people get mad at Spider-Man movies, (laughs) which is already out, which is kind of silly. So that's funny. I thought that was funny. Uh, So what else you got, Sir Lana? Um, As we look through our notes and see if there's anything good out there that we've missed. Well, the continuing saga of SoundCloud. Are they going away? Are they not? Well, I thought uh, you saw some good news about that. Well, SoundCloud stays afloat with an emergency investment as the CEO steps aside. So the current CEO of SoundCloud is going to be replaced with the former CEO of Vimeo, which is a... um, Video streaming? Kind of a snottier video streaming Mm -hmm. service than than YouTube, Mm -hmm. if you've ever been there. Um, Slightly more serious content there. So SoundCloud said it has closed the investor round necessary to keep it going for the foreseeable future. Um, So they're going to get a new CEO, and they're going to focus on the role of the chairman and the long-term stuff. And the investment that was made was $169.5 million. And it gets this cash infusion. Uh, it'll be the largest financing round of, in history of SoundCloud. Um, they said they see a strong, independent future for the company. But it, it everything else sounds like it's circling the drain to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see what he said. I'm really surprised that the investors have put all that money into it. I mean, they, I mean, it. I guess SoundCloud has the potential to be a really good company. It says they're going to pay greater attention to the creators, which includes developing a robust creative toolkit for SoundCloud's unlimited service. I don't know what that means. They want to attract more musicians to pay for its upper tier subscription. They better have some awesome you know, perks for that. Um, millions of creators to choose these tools, to share their work, and that will remain the focus of the company. I got mad at them for they kept slapping down mashups left and right for people who weren't making any money off of it. So I, I just kind of lost it. I lost my interest. In fact, I've even deleted the app from my phone. 
Well, the you know, even though you've deleted uh, your app from your phone, it should go on to say that you can listen to the Space Boy Universe. Uh, yeah, you ne- can. In network programming on SoundCloud. And, and do that if you wish, if you'd like to. I mean, we're happy to have you listen to us on whatever platform you choose. It's just that for me, I'm, like, I'm kind of over it. Mm. So they said the future of the company hinged on pending a reorganization proposal. So it sounds like they're gutting the whole thing. Um, they're going to have new investors and some new stock options. And they've been cutting their liquidations. And it just sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like they're doing some scrambling. Hmm. Oh, Gene's sending you some healing thoughts. Oh, thank you, Gene. I sure do appreciate that. I need all the healing and thoughts come my way. To my get... throat's starting to drought, too, so <laughs> if that helps you. Yeah, the uh, programming's ending at a good time because uh, this cold, I need to cover that vent. It's killing me. Uh, normally, I cut the AC off. And, well, and normally, I'd be shivering like a little naked chihuahua, but I, uh, it feels good for once. It actually feels perfectly good in here. Well, that's because I left it on. Of course, uh, at the, the uh, good, good feeling you've gotten comes out of sacrifice that I feel bad. Well, you weren't going to call it a night? Well, I... Uh, I will like to go ahead and call it a night, and, and please forgive me because, you know, it is five more minutes to go here. But as always, Serlano, what do we have for housekeeping? Well, I don't well, think we're going to have that person. No, well, <laughs> we're, we're kind oh, of playing tag with somebody. We're supposed to have Jim and Jody Bray um, from Outer Rim come but back. But we never heard uh, that. Well, no, I think that uh, we'll follow. It's, that's what we're, Scott told me, and so... We just need to follow up with okay. them, make sure we're on target, and I feel very confident that they will be on next week. Yeah, so Jim and Jody Bray of the okay. outer, outer Rim.com, is it? Right, and if we don't have the Outer Rim, yes, and if we don't have for the 26th, <laughs> I have an idea what I want to talk about for the 26th. So. You know, I, I'm looking at it this way. That other uh, interview, mm-hmm. um, it, it's going to be recorded anyway, mm-hmm. so it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, until, It'll leave, we'll still need content until that interview is recorded. It will not go up on the on the scheduling board, and so we have it confirmed. Confirmed, so we, we don't want to yank your chain. Yeah, we're tired of yanking your chain because you know we we don't want you to go away. That's why angry. we didn't have any anything to tell you about tonight because we we're like. Is he going to get here? Is he not? You know. Yeah, it worked out good with uh, Reverend John Polk, which is great. Uh, we, uh, we've missed him on the airwaves. Uh, so once he gets settled in uh, Arizona, you know, uh, you know, he's looking forward to being back on the air. And but until then, you know, you can still hear us on the Quantum Hologram Matrix uh, this coming Wednesday. And uh, uh, you know, I'm kind of excited to talk about the Dulce uh, mm-hmm. stuff with Eric, with Eric because. He'll bring his unique perspective, and, you know, uh, we'll bring our excitement. I'll I'll go Uh, find my notes and bring them up. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, there you go. Um, As always, uh, we love you, Space Cadets. Uh, We can't imagine a universe without you. And if you can just do us a favor by telling a friend uh, about this wonderful program that you get to hear right here on the SBU Network, we sure would appreciate it. Uh, Just by telling the word of mouth gets that out and makes this program even more special. Mm -hmm. So with that, Serlana, um, let me look at this over here on my end. Um, Let's see here. We're we're doing good. We're at a good time. Yeah, so it's, it's, you know, it's about normal time. So I just want to make sure I'm playing the correct outro. Yes, let's get that correct. And not Space Boy music. Maybe that was subconsciously I'm thinking... I'm due for a Space Boy music program show, so... Yeah, it's been a while. You could yeah, do it. Yeah, I'm, I might have to consider that, uh, just to remind people, yeah, the music is still there. It plays through the universe. Speaking of which, say goodnight, Sir Lana. Oh, yeah. Space Boy Universe is hosted by Space Boy and Sir Lana. Executive producer is Sir Lana. Social media producer is Dennis Koch. Associate producer is Lee Ann Cordes. 
Music production is Spaceboy of SpaceboyMusic.com. Special thanks goes out to Lee NK, K28, Mark S, and Bob N. This has been a Spaceboy Universe production. Support the universe by exploring Spaceboy Universe with Spaceboy and Sir Lana. Sweet dreams Space Cadets. <laughs>